We live again. Ah, woo. But not streaming. Ah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what number we're on. Like 19 or something? 19. 19. Number 19. Prime numbers. Good job. Go team. Uh, yeah, we're picking up at the Lupin Mansion. I'm going to give a quick recap. We are playing in person. So when, when we're listening to this in the future, that's why the sound is different. Yeah. And that's why we're going to have giant Penelope stats up on the screen. Everybody ignore the stats. It's okay. It's respectable. <laughs> You're level four. You earned it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to give the quick recap of what happened last go round. Okay. So um, after dumping the contents of the bag of holding into the tub, um, you determined that they probably belonged to a large um, rogue burglar or some sort. Um, so neat. Then your specifically um, Penelope's invitation activated and sent her on a crazy chase scene adventure following uh, the White Rabbit until you eventually got to the Lupin Mansion um, where you met Richard, the guy that um, is appropriately a dick. And uh, he snubbed the halfling entirely and in doing so, did not get the invitation <laughs> that you were going to deliver, but did get his coat back. Um, you proceeded to step inside, and you found that the m mansion was actually, like, on the outside it's a real mansion, but on the inside it's the inside of a magnificent mansion. So, cool, high-level magic at work there. Um, and you took a look around immediately. You found the stage. Um, you met Arsène Lupin the seventh, who, per your prior conditions, gave you access to the um, kimono section early. So you went through, you looked at a bunch of kimono, trying to find the one that uh, presumably belonged to uh, Kwaku's mom, and or at least was meant for her. And you took a look around, some investigation, some whittling things down. You got a pretty good idea of which one you think it is. Uh, but you can't get it yet, so that's cool. Um, also, while you're looking around at stuff, you saw a bunch of other neat items in the room immediately next to it, including um, a map that um, caught Annis's attention because it seems to correspond to uh, a number of interesting points related to druidic ley lines and stuff like that. So that's pretty neat. Um, Penelope saw a golden fiddle, which she wanted. Um, that would probably suck. Probably. <laughs> but you saw it. It looks nice. You kind of want it. Um, and then when you went back and then investigated the area with Jameson near the stage, um, you were introduced to a side room that contains, you know, a general chill area for people who are performing. And there's a fiddle case in there, which got your attention. Um, you know that apparently the golden fiddle from what uh, Mr. Lupin said... Um, belonged to an American, so you started making some conclusions there. And other than that, uh, you were enjoying the free food, which was pretty much whatever you asked for, thanks to Magecraft. Uh, Hemlock has been eating nonstop, so we'll see if that ever pays off. Um, I think that's about it for the highlights of last time. Like, you've got a little bit of time because you got here an hour before everyone else like you mm -hmm. you made the trip like most of the normal invitations haven't activated yet so you'll know whenever Annis's activates since she has the one for Kwaku that everyone else is on their way but you kind of just had early access to some of the stuff for the moment you haven't met any other people yet you've just seen Lupin and a bunch of you know spectral servant people running around taking care of food being like ghost roadies for the music uh, stuff like that, but other than that, like, you haven't actually seen anyone. You know that security's coming up next, because that's what Lupin stepped away to coordinate, and that's presumably going to be the church people, as he mentioned before, so you kind of have a few minutes if you just want to wander. I think that about sums it up. Yeah. So, I'm going to close this cool picture, although it does exist in the background just dimmed their eyes will follow you everywhere spooky 
Um, and speaking of following you everywhere, we have turned on the uh, line of sight so that you can't actually see in rooms that you're not in unless the door or window is nearby, which will hopefully make it easier to stay focused in an event that has so much going on, but also make it feel a little more real. Um, for people watching the stream who aren't us, you'll notice that Fate Merlin is wandering around because he's the point of view camera that we're using since Merlin can only watch everything. He's not really there. Um, he's not going to be memeing it up and casting spells and making flowers happen and giving people penises. Um, essentially the three things he's known for. Um, so don't worry about it. He's just a camera. If I could hide him on his own view, which you're watching, you wouldn't see him at all. But also, like, for future sessions, uh, when we're not all physically together and in person, uh, Penelope will only see what Penelope can see, Annis will only see what Annis can see, or occasionally jump over to Hemlock's point of view instead. So, it'll be interesting to see what I end up doing with this screen for people watching from the third point of view, because that might just look like they don't understand what walls are, because they can't see the walls. <laughs> don't worry about it. But, yeah, you've got a little bit of time. It's not quite 11 yet, so no one else is presumably coming in unless they work here. But if there's anything you would like to do or check out, you've got some time. Cool. If you want to move, just either grab the mouse for me or tell me where to put you. Okay, cool. Uh... Oh, just to describe the room a little better since it's been a little bit. Uh, so the to your right... Like, from the entrance where, like, Ghost Merlin is standing, uh, which I guess is to the top on camera screen, uh, there's the case that has the woman in the bird kimono who presumably is going to give you the instructions when the game actually starts. The top two cases contain kimonos. The bottom case contains other stuff. Uh, and then at the far south of the room, next to that um, looking out kind of window thing, uh, there's a big red curtain that's sort of cordoning off that area. So, like, you can tell there's something back there, but you can't see what it is. Okay. Otherwise, the room that you came in is to the right, and to the north is what um, Lupin told you would be, like, the private rooms for when people need a break. Ah. Cool. But we can only use it once. Right. Like, your invites get you in once. Technically, you have two invitations, so you can use them twice. But also, Penelope, as someone who's working there, has access to a different room, which only the music people can get into, so mm -hmm. use that as you see fit. And there, was, there wasn't there was a guy in there, but there was a fiddle, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, you, you found a, a fiddle case. So presumably at least one other person is here to perform. And the red, the red curtain is, like, right here? Uh, it's to the left of it. Um, I'll move Merlin around so that you can... It's directly under where Merlin is. So, like, kind of, and to use the mouse, it's in this area. Okay. Like, you can see that, like, that's a different floor. That's not, like, a wall. It just, due to the cropping, it looks like it's a wall, but it's a floor. Okay. I wonder what's behind that red curtain. <laughs> you can peek. <laughs> I'm gonna go peek. Okay, so move Penelope down there. Whoa, and what, what just happened? <clears throat> so when you hold your mouse over this thing, do you get a prompt to open it? Uh, ooh. <clears throat> it says... Closed. Yeah, so click on it. I was by zooming in, I would be able to read that better. Oh. And you, you hey. can now open and close doors. <laughs> cool. It's a dinosaur. So it's a big T-Rex head. Yeah. Holy crap. It is in a similar case to the other ones, but it is big and you can walk around it. That's a dinosaur. Did he steal a dinosaur? Like the whole thing? I hope so. Holy sh Is it just a skull or is it... It's just the skull. Oh. But it is... Still, it's really fucking It's cool. huge. Like, it is appropriately large for, like, essentially a T-Rex head. Like, in real life, a T-Rex head is giant. Yep. Like, yep. We've seen Sue. Yep. Yeah. He was just like the courtyard. Yep. Um, and so, like, when you take a look out there, the first thing that you notice is that um, 
when you walked in from outside, it was all dark, and none of the lights were on, and there was a bitter mage standing out there. That was from the main door. But when you're wandering around in here and you open the door or look out the windows, you see something that's kind of like outside but doesn't have any of that. Hmm. So you can kind of piece together that if you want to leave the mansion, you have to go out the main door. Otherwise, you just get this pretty facsimile of it on the outside. Presumably, you'll hit an invisible wall if you try to go too far away, but it's kind of nice. It's providing the ability to look through windows and all of that um, from the role that you had last week of what a magnificent mansion is and does. Mm -hmm you know that there's only one entrance or exit, so the rest of this is presumably to keep the verisimilitude. But yeah, you can wander around on the grass a little bit, you can look up at the sky, there's no light pollution on this side, so it's pretty. But you know it's essentially fake. I wonder who stole the skull from. The museum, maybe? Maybe. Private collector. Either way, it's impressive, because, I mean, some of the smaller stuff, it's like, okay, cool, you can steal that. I mean... You shouldn't, but you did. How the fuck did he get away with the skull? And how is the owner going to take it away? And, you know, just put it in a box. It's fine. Oh, yes, totally. Oh, that's how that works, right? Mm. The biggest of bags of holding. Well, well, I don't want it. I don't either. <laughs> it's cool, though. Yeah. It's interesting to see up close. All right. I'll go take the mouse. Uh, no. So while you're looking at the dinosaur, um, you can both just do a perception check. <gasps> like Die a rolling. Of Would you like the tray? No. <laughs> um, I would like to see the step. <laughs> yep. I have a plus two. Your perception is mm. plus one. So eighteen. Okay. Uh, 13. Alrighty. Oh, there's so many sides. There, there, there. Alright. So, uh, both of you can see this pretty easily. So, like, when you look up from down here, there's a little, um, on the floor above you, uh, watch point leaning over with, like, a railing, and you can see someone looking down, and it's your buddy Crosby. And he's just sort of looking at the dinosaur skull from up there. Crosby! Hello! Oh, hey, welcome. How are you doing? Oh, you see, you found the big head. Is that yours? Hopefully. I don't like how you answered that. Was it yours to begin with? No. <laughs> More power to you, I guess. How are you going to get it out of here? Oh, well, truth be told, I don't actually want it, <laughs> but I want to talk to it. Because I've never heard a dinosaur noise. You know, that's fair. <laughs> I'm hoping that if I can, you know, come out on top in this game here, then I can fly in my daughter, who's learning druid stuff from mom, and we can do a one-two punch, and maybe she can use speak with animals while I use speak with dead, and she can have the first ever conversation with a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. That would be quite fun. I figure that's a good birthday present. I was going to offer my own use of speak with animals, but that sounds much more delightful. I think she'll have fun with it. I'm, I'm trying to show her that necromancy isn't just shambling corpses. You know, Dad's doing what he can to make things as, you know, wholesome as possible in the world of The Walking Dead. How did you get in here early? I work here, remember? Oh, that's right. How'd you get up there? I took the stairs. There were people blocking the stairs. How did you get up there? Oh, yeah, I, I got here before they put those up. I can't actually get back down yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was supposed to, but I wandered. Good luck up there, I guess. I, Anything cool up there? Um, well, there's a bunch of locked doors getting the impression I'm not supposed to be up here. <laughs> but as I walked around a little bit, yeah, you can see the stage pretty good from up here. Um... So that's cool, and if I wander over to the other end, I can kind of see where people are probably going to be eating. So that's pretty neat. Um, otherwise, it's mostly locked doors. Sounds fun. If you need food, we can have them lock stuff up to you. It'll be eaten by the time it gets there, you know that. <laughs> he 
to leave the whole baguette. <laughs> I'm sure eventually you'll be allowed to leave and go back Oh, I, I could probably get down there as soon as anyway. I'm, I'm kind of using this as an opportunity to watch people come in because I don't know who's going to be here. And, you know, if one of the people that shows up is, like, scary, I might just want to hang out up here for the evening. <laughs> That's fair. See how that goes. Oh, wait. Hey. <coughs> so, you're Mages Association, right? Technically. Do you know a guy named Richard? I mean, it's a pretty common name. Kind of an asshole. Oh, that motherfucker. Yeah, I know him. <laughs> he, he won't be... Uh... He's in policies, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he very much will not be attending this party. We have his invitation. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah, he sucks. Um, it, it's kind of one of those things where you put up with him because you don't want to piss off policies, but, like... He knows that, <laughs> so he's a bit of a dick. Um, he can be really nice to humans, but, you know, that's not really good enough. Yeah, no, he's a piece of shit to halflings and elves, I guess. And he, was pretty, he wasn't He was that mean to you, I guess. But. I mean, admittedly, odds are pretty good. So, like, did he make it here at all? I mean, he's standing outside. Oh, that's really funny. Um... There, there's a decent chance that he's going to annoy every person on their way in, and someone might fall for it. I mean, people are afraid of policies, but at the very least, if he doesn't have an invitation and he has to come in as someone plus one, you're probably depriving him of a chance to get a thing. True. That's so, true. There is that. Um, does that just mean you have an extra invitation? Yes, I suppose so. Yep. yep. Neat. I suppose we can use it to get an extra thing, can't we? <gasps> Maybe. Is that how that works? I, as I understand it, everyone with an invitation has a chance to get stuff, and the plus ones are largely because we're paranoid people. Valid. So, I don't know if one person can get two things or not, but at the very least, if you... You could maybe have your bird use it. Or Jameson. Jameson's or that nice here. guy that I spent a lot of time say, talking to. Jameson's here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would probably work. <laughs> just want to get an extra thing. I'd be like, hey, you want to go talk to Crosby again? <laughs> Here's 500 extra dollars. Please don't murder me in my sleep. <laughs> he was really nice. He was really interested in hearing all about, well, mage stuff, I guess. I don't know how much he's supposed to know, but I figure he's probably in on enough of it that why not? So I gave him a lot of the office gossip. Oh, no. So maybe he knows about how much of an asshole Richard is. <laughs> I mean, like, it, he's kind of one of those guys that he takes his job really seriously, but he doesn't quite realize that you don't have to be a dick, and you'll probably get further if you're not actively shitting on people. So he might learn something. He might just hate you. All things are possible. Policies are kind of jerks when they want to be. Gross. But you're not really association, so you're not really worse off than you were before, probably. might just matter if you actually have to interact with them. Mm. True. Well, there is that no, no violence rule, so... That's also true. Doesn't mean we can't, you know, annoy him, play oh, pranks. Oh, I can do that for sure. I'm very good at annoying people. Very good at annoying mages association people, too. Oh, yeah, they hate you. Oh, good. I love that. <laughs> well, specifically, they're really annoyed that you don't care that they told people not to, like, show off their ears and stuff. Like, I mean, what's it to them if I exist, you know? Well, they don't want you to. Fuck this. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like, I, I get along pretty well with Phantasmal Species buddies. They have way more interesting stuff to tell. And, like, if you ever meet a real elf, they're pretty great because they know a lot. I've been agree. around a while. I'm half elf. Um. <laughs> Which Penelope didn't know. <laughs> I feel like that's a thing that you've mentioned. Well, you I know how old forgotten. she is because you had that that's awkward true. food conversation. I think you're probably aware she's a half elf. That's right. Ignore that. Sorry. Sorry. But, I mean, presumably Annis knows at least one elf by virtue of oh, parents. Yeah. So. Like, hang out with the druids. You've probably met more elves than most people. Mm-hmm. On that note. <laughs> um. Alright. I think I'm going to keep one.
underground for a little bit. Oh, oh that's fair. Sounds good. Yeah, if you get a chance, check out the room next to the stage room. Uh, it's got really cool stuff that I can't see from up here due to how these little balcony things work. But when I took a look around before, it seems like that's where his favorite stuff is. This, the room next to the stage room? So like... Like from the map up and to the left, whereas the stage is to the right. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Mm. Alright, cool. I'll go check that out. Sounds good to me. I am quite curious. And now that I know we can get an extra thing. <laughs> right? Perhaps that golden fiddle. Oh, maybe... Maybe... I don't know. Do you want that map? I do kind of want the map. Because, like, we've got one invitation for the for the kimono. Let's... Let's, yeah. let's see. Let's scope. There's yeah. a lot of stuff here. Wait, so technically we have three invitations. Yeah. You do? Okay, so that's one thing each, and then a bonus thing, potentially. Like, all of these are at least the possibility of getting a thing, mm -hmm. so. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, let's go! <laughs> Gotta go that so way. So I think I told you what was in the room immediately to the right. Yeah, this was, room. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I can recap if oh. you like. Oh, oh no. I, I moved too far away, and now I can't see, and now I can't see Penelope. Oh, no! There we go. Okay. Mm. Uh, I see necklace with shiny rock, a copper coin. That was you, that was the thing that was the thing that's the focus at the cafe. Yep, that was the thing that made the cafe weird. Uh, I wrote the words flask with mustache. Yes, there's a shiny flask that has like a mustache painted on the side of it. Uh, some kind of domino mask. Mm -hmm. The gold fiddle. Yep. And a ring. Yeah, I remember a ring. Some kind of ring. Move Anna's sack so I can see my note. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yep, there's a. It's a transparent, bluish ring. Okay. Yep. So that's what's in the cases here. Neat. I still kind of want that gold fiddle, but like, I don't know why I want that gold fiddle. By all accounts, the sound quality should suck. Let's see what else is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can play the fiddle, I assume. I, I mean, yeah, I play the viola. I don't know what the difference is. That's okay. You'll get educated. <laughs> it's just... Two hours of reconditioning later. <laughs> Do you understand the difference now? I stopped listening about a half an hour ago. <gasps> oh, I moved too far away again. There I listened to all of your plant talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just completely devastated. So as you can see, the stairs look more like they were supposed to now. You yeah. can actually tell that which one goes up and which one goes oh, down. Time lost. And all that. You found a bird? Oh, look at him in his fancy. Yeah. His fancy. He's got his updated his token fancy. now. Look at him. So round. He's only going to get more round. That's true. <laughs> He's just so, going to turn into a giant orb of bird. So is this room? No. no That's no, no. the bathroom. We go, we can, I think we can. Like in terms around. of the directions that you were Not given, right. I'll show you on the Merlin screen. Um, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. We're that going might... up this way. And then to the right is the room with the stage. And to the left is just a door that's closed right now. Okay. Oh, I'm Come along, Penelope. So ah. Oh, we can go around this way. Okay. Yeah. Like, you kind of have to squeeze to get around the staircase on the right. It will let you, but it's a little tight. Whee! I'm just, like, imagining you're just dragging Penelope, like, ah. Like, walking Penelope around on a kid leash. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, I don't know why, but I was expecting it to be locked. Uh, you'd think so. Ah, oh, look at this large room. Oh no, why is Merlin here? <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> Should just replace him with an actual camera. <laughs> or like a Lakitu carrying the little camera for Mario 64. <laughs> or that one that one anime that has the people with like the TV head and the camera head. Oh, those oh are weird. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Those are weird. Anyway. Yeah, there's a bunch of crap in here. We're in the room. I'm going to do a perception is check. Is that a fucking mummy? <laughs> I think it is. It's hard to tell. Perception check. Let's go. Perception check. 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 Perception check.
Perception plus one. <laughs> now I have to pick up the dice. Oh no! Uh, I rolled a 17. I'm struggling with rolling this dice. Here, that's... Oh no! The struggle continues. A three plus one, one, that's a four. Okay. I mean, like, thankfully it's a display case, so it's designed to make it easy to see things, but yeah. Okay. So, so you got a four and you got a 17. But yeah. Okay. But I, I got close. And all I did was literally move two inches. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, these cases are big. Like, they're to scale with what you see on here, meaning it's like a 10 foot space. You could literally have people walking around inside the glass if there were such a desire um but the um the case has seven prominent items in it uh-huh and so going around it from um the top left um there's a it's a bow and arrow mm -hmm. and the um in the case of that one like it's sort of set up like in a museum thing where you have a bow, like there's not a string in it, but it is to the bow itself. And it has a, an arrow sitting sort of adjacent to it. Um, let me pull out some pictures. Some pixars. Some pixars? Some pixars. So like the bow itself um, is, um, it's nice looking, but it doesn't seem to be exceptional. Just like you've seen bows before. Mm-hmm. Um, but the arrow was interesting because the arrow looks like it's made out of um, a, a shiny metal. Um, it's a silver. And it, it's interesting to you because um, you kind of noticed this in the previous room with the kimonos and stuff too. But like when you look at these cases, you can see straight through the glass. Like you can tell there's glass there slightly. But um, none of the things in the cases actually seem to reflect off of the glass itself they're just there hmm. so that's a little odd um but in the case of this arrow it seems to have um light reflecting off of it hmm. while most of the other things in the case don't hmm. um it's like there's something special about that it kind of reminds you of when you were testing the kimonos and one of them had that slightly different sheen than the rest of them hmm. um so it, it sort of reminds you of that um but it Let's see. Can I share that from the screen? Let's see what that looks like. A question mark. It looks like an arrow. Hmm, yeah. Okay. Neat. So is it is the bow silver or is it just the arrow? The bow silver? is just like a normal wooden okay. bow. Um, you, you get the impression the bow is there specifically to give context for an arrow, even though it should be kind of obvious what an arrow is. Um, display people are fun like that. So that's the top left one. Uh, going down under that, there is a stone bust of Hermes. Hmm. Look at him. Little things. He's got a fun hat. He's got a fun hat. Um, but like it is pretty much exactly like it looks in this art. Like the entire thing is stone. It's not like it's wearing a real hat or anything. Hmm. Um, and you can remember from when you were talking to Lupin in the cafe that he mentioned that he had a statue that he used to send the invitations. Hmm. So ah. this would make sense for the messenger god. <laughs> so if you want the ability to spam people anywhere in the world. Don't tell me that. Here I'll you go. <laughs> Considering it was capable of delivering messages within bounded fields, it's probably really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's neat. Next item in it. Oh, this is so weird doing it on two different screens and looking at a third one. <laughs> um, all right, so the third one down is straight up a bone. Just a bone. Like a big old bone. And it looks like that. Hmm, that was a so giant. So not a giant animal bone. Um, I say giant, like it's to scale with a normal animal, but like it's a bone. Hmm. Now, what, like, what size of animal? Because that, yeah, can I roll nature to yeah, see? Yeah, you can roll animal? nature to try to take a guess about the animal. I have a plus three. Well, that's a 14. Okay. Um, it looks about in scale with, um, like, a 
like a beast of burden type thing, like you know, flower and animals. donkeys, Ox. horses, mules, oxes, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's about in that neighborhood. So it's not actually that big, mm-hmm. but it's got this prominent spot with a ton of space around it. Mm. No other real context as to what its deal is, but it's a bone. Neat. Look at the bone. These are our Lupin's favorite. Hmm. Or at least this is more prominent than the others where they squeezed a bunch of them in those little cases. Like these ones have a ton of space. Um, the bottom center. It's really hard to make out in this, so I'm definitely showing you a picture of that. Um, is something that both of you would understand immediately without having to do any special roles for. Um, that is a mage crest. Hmm. Like, the things that are passed down from families. Hmm. Um, and it's very unusual to see one out like this. Like, typically a crest is on someone's body. Mm-hmm. With the exception of when they're removed so that they can be transplanted to another mage or they're removed so that someone can improve on the quality of it by tuning it a little bit Mm. um it's really weird seeing this one just here and you'll also note from the design of it that there is a gap in the bottom right because normally it squares out Mm -hmm. so this is not a complete one like part of it's missing but considering families will spend generations cultivating these it's really unusual to see one that presumably could just go to someone. So, that's pretty odd. That's a dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you would like to roll Arcana, you can have a shot of trying to guess what kind of crest it is. I got an 11. I got a 17 plus whatever the modifier is. Four. Oh, I've been looking at your stats. Oh. <laughs> Yours is a plus three. Oh, then I got a 17 plus three, so 20. 20, nice. I I just rolled an eight then. Okay. Let's see if you want to borrow my stats, you can. Does that mean that you had a different score for your nature check on that bone? Mm, yeah, it would have been a minus one to whatever I wrote. Not a minus one. It, it, whatever I, number I gave you would have been one less. Okay, so yeah, you were like a 14 or something. So yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um. But okay, cool, then. Um, yeah, so Penelope hitting, like, the, the dirty 20 on this one. Um, this is definitely an arcane crest. This is the kind of stuff that you get out of more the mage association type of magecraft than, like, the more druidic or the more divine. Um, like, ultimately, all mages use these, but you can sort of feel the family of that out. So, this presumably came from someone who in D D terms is a wizard or sorcerer or warlock or bard kind of thing. Probably not a warlock because they don't really have crests so much as borrow power. But yeah, that's a that would understandably be in a prominent position. That like people have killed for things like that before. And also since you hit twenty, you can kind of surmise that maybe that's why Crosby's here. Because one of his jobs as a necromancer is recovering those from dead people so that they can be transferred. So when you asked him way, way back in Germany, like, are you there to do necromancer stuff? And he gave you that soft answer of like, well, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, this makes sense. <laughs> Maybe it was his job to bring that here or otherwise to mm-hmm. apply it to someone new when it has a new owner. Ooh. But, like... You can already imagine that whenever, like, you know, if Richard does get in, he's going to be pissed. <laughs> if he sees, like, a straight-up mage family crest up for grabs. Oh, no. Because that's so taboo. Like, that's against all kinds of rules. hmm Because that's, like, you know, three-plus generations of a mage family getting shunted off to someone else. <laughs> like, that's the kind of shit that... Um, Kenneth was trying to drill into Waver's head of, like, you will never amount to anything because you don't have this. Mm-hmm. So, that's fun. Um, all right, now we're in the bottom right one. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not quite a mummy, but um, it is a burial shroud. So, related to, possibly. Um, it seems to be wrapped around... Um, you can see from, like, this, the head and feet sticking out of it that it's a mannequin, but it is wrapped around something. 
I'm going to show you the picture, but it's not going to be very useful because barrel shots all kind of look the same. Um, like, yeah. Like, full disclosure, I just used the picture of the um, Shroud of Turin from real life because it's the only burial shroud picture I can find. That's fair. It's not the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> you don't have the burial cloth of Jesus in this display. I'm just telling you now. Okay, so we can't summon Jesus. You could never summon Jesus as a servant. <laughs> It wouldn't work. I swear to God, if they ever add Jesus as a servant, I'm going to know that FGO's over. It's like, we're done. Bye. I could see them adding Judas, maybe. They could add Judas, absolutely. <laughs> they could add, they've added way more Christian characters over time than I thought they would, because originally it was just like Martha, and then oh. eventually they added oh. um, uh, David. Mm -hmm. But they've added a lot more of them since then. Mm -hmm. But I don't ever see them being like, and here's Jesus. You can summon Jesus to fight for you. He'll or Jesus a... waifu. That would be the end of everything. Or he'll be a lion. <laughs> oh, he could actually be a lion. You're right. Or a lion man. Like... <laughs> he would actually just be a, a legitimate shepherd who mm -hmm. is a goat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are you saying Jesus is not the goat? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway. That'd be awful. But yeah, there's just a shroud of some kind in there. Um, let's see, above that, uh, so there's, a. it's this, um, it's leather, but it's wrapped around something. You can tell that it's wrapped around something that is maybe about a foot by a foot. It's like a tile. Um, you can see from the, um, the wrappings, a little bit of it is exposed so you can see what's inside of it kind of like peeking and there's like some stone sticking out in there and you can see the slightest little edge of a rune in it so mm -hmm. there's presumably some kind of stone with a rune on it sitting down in there mm. so that's neat i'd show you the picture but then you'd see the whole thing and that would be really fun yeah. um not but, enough of the rune to make out what it is um you could do another arcana check and try to do context clues based on what you do see like, it's going to be hard, but I'll you can try. I'll use my own stats this time. That is a six. Eighteen plus three. Twenty-one. Nice. Um, okay, so from the twenty-one, like, you're familiar that rune magecraft is pretty popular in Europe. Um, you've never seen a rune that uses the bit that you can see exposed here. Hmm. But that's weird to you because you've seen enough of them that like, even if you don't know what they mean, you can recognize the shapes. This is different. Hmm. Um, and from your 21, you can surmise that historically speaking, there are more runes than are commonly known, but they tend to be hoarded. Like they don't share those. Um, the people that know them are mostly people in the Wandering Sea branch of the Mage Association who don't leave. They just, like, they've completely isolated themselves. They keep everything, all the old magical secrets to themselves. They're the most hermits. They're located in a place that no one really knows where it is if they don't already know about it. And they only come out once a year. But because they tend to hoard this knowledge, there's a pretty good chance that if anyone would know what, what this rune is, it would be them. Um... But again, they don't leave very often, and they don't share anything. They're super isolationist mages. Um, and finally, the last thing in there, as you can tell, it's a shield. It's a really old, beat-up shield. Hopefully it doesn't have a screaming man like in that picture. <laughs> oh, it is old. Super old. Wait, there's a screaming man in the picture? No, no oh, yesterday, no, 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 the, the Alexander picture. Oh, <laughs> right. No, it doesn't have that, no. Uh, what, what would I roll to see if I can even glean how old it is? Um. History? History would be the best one, yeah. Okay. If you're trying to, like, pick what region of the world or era it's from. That's a two, so probably not. Uh, not especially. Yeah. Um, like, it's old. Yeah. You can tell it's old. Um, it's not a modern shield. I also rolled it down. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it, a shield. It's a really old shield. Um, it doesn't seem to be in great condition, but I mean, it's super it's rusty. Two plus three, does that five get us anything? You know it's not a sword. Oh, good. <laughs> it does not appear to be made of 
um, vibranium. It is not, in fact, Captain America's shield. So if you're going to summon Captain America, don't use this. Okay. Good to know. Um, but now it's just a really old shield that's beat off all to hell. Um, but yeah, those are the seven I'm prominent trying to things remember. in this room. And this was back in Germany. When Quaku was telling us about the Holy Grail War, he mentioned that it's easier to summon with a catalyst. Mm -hmm. But it's easiest to summon if we know what the catalyst actually, like who it belonged to. But uh, so Kim, what you... know, Kim knows, thanks to Fate Zero, that as long as you have a catalyst, it'll still summon the thing. It's just you may not know what you're getting. Yeah, so the yeah. general idea is that when you're doing the ritual, the catalyst will summon whatever servant corresponds to that catalyst but if it's mm -hmm. not a specific enough catalyst then there's a variety like if you had a piece of the round table it could summon any number of heroes from it mm -hmm. but if you have a piece of the round table and like you invoke king arthur then it's more likely to summon king arthur than sir gowan mm -hmm. but if you don't know It'll just summon... It'll them. summon someone that meets that requirement. Which, for some items, there's only the one. Like, you don't need to know Gilgamesh. That if you have the skin of the first snake, you're going to get Gilgamesh. Mm -hmm. That doesn't apply to anyone else. And if you just do the ritual without a catalyst, the grail will just match whoever it thinks best suits It will you. fit your personality. Yeah. So if you do a summon without that, then it will find someone who very closely aligns with your, in the meta sense, your origin. Mm -hmm. But, like, really, just whatever seems right for you. Like, mm -hmm. that's how... Um, a lot of the summons happened where they were super compatible, but not very strong. Right. Um, though, oddly enough, almost every sermon summon fate has a catalyst, because I think they just like seeding those in. Mm -hmm. I can't think of too many that were summoned without them. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah. So, those are the cool things in here. And obviously, like, if you win a thing here, you've got time to study it more. Mm -hmm. Get more rolls on it. Um, but, yeah. So, those are the big things in this room. Um... You also notice while you're in here that there's no overlook, like, you know, mm -hmm. Crosby said, so, like, he can't really see into here right. <laughs> while he's wandering around up there. Um, but, yeah, like, you've got a, another room to your left. Oh, did you close the door behind you? Yeah, that's funny. I've been randomly opening and closing yeah. doors because I think it's funny. I, it's a fun function. I had fun building them in. Um, also, just from your general research, you notice there is a door in the bottom left of this room behind the glass. Oh. Presumably how people get in there. Oh. But we can't get there from here because of the glass. Right. Yeah. Although you have walked by it from the other side. Shall we check out the next room? Sure. <gasps> it's a room. It is a sitting room. And a hallway. Mm -hmm. I wonder what half of that stuff was. Yeah, it's very mysterious. Like, did you you saw that mage crest, right? I saw it. Yes, it's very weird to see it. Yeah, out. Yeah, it was a little unnerving. Yeah, I hope whoever it got taken from is the one who gets it, because that could be very yeah. bad in the hands of bad people. Let's go into this hallway. <laughs> Whee! Okay, um, as you step in there, you see a large number of rooms and you, you're not going to need to do a check to understand that this is probably the other side of the room where Lupin was telling you the private rooms were. Gotcha. Ah. So. Oh yeah, probably. Just going to peek in here. Not go in to peek. Ah, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, what happened? Oh no. Moving Merlin down oh, so no. that you can see. And it's stuck in I'm the wall. I'm stuck. Oh no. And it's this is no, why you no. don't mess with the doors. Um, uh, uh, what, what, uh. I think you closed the door on yourself. Oh, because you're clicking on the, <laughs> the door close open button instead of letting Annis out. Oh no, and now <laughs> the keys. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Uh, oh no. I'm stuck in the wall. All right, I'll get you out. The keys move the map around, but not the me. Oh, that's funny. Alright. GM magic. <laughs> Annis, are you okay? I'm stuck in the door. How You're did you do this? And now I've teleported. Uh, what are you doing? And then the other end of the of this hallway is the room with all the kimonos and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll just, I'll let Merlin walk down and show you how it works. Oh wait, you closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope's trapped inside. Oh no! Oh, no. 
Oh, so yeah, like Merlin comes down here. Um, if I open that door with Merlin, then you can see the room with the to, to the south. Gotcha. Yep. But to the right is another door that you have not experimented with yet. Um, sure. Oh, down here. Nope. Don't leave me behind. Sorry! I'm just very excited about exploring this match. <laughs> okay, so now you're back to the main hall. What about the... Hmm. And I'll just tell you, you can click on it because I didn't program it otherwise, but you can't go through the door's lock. Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I put the door there for functionality, but I haven't found out how to actually lock them yet. So. There will be some things later on where we'll be like, don't open that door, please. <laughs> There's a room. I guess I could just make there? them walls, but yeah, you found the men's room. Good job. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's get out of there. Oh, no. I didn't bother finding pictures of urinals to put in there, but you can assume <laughs> that that's the men's room and that the ladies' room is on the right. Been, <laughs> Whoops, wrong door. have been in here. Uh, I do like the fact that the map keeps the gray version of what you've already seen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you get a yeah. sense of like what you've already been to, but can't see if anything changes in there. So, like, if NPCs or whatever move around, it won't update until you're actually in the room again. Oh, wait, there's another room. Where? Right there. Is that just, like, dedicated? I don't remember. Oh, oh. hey, there's another room! There is. Oh. Uh, the display room. Let's go in and look around. Woo! <laughs> Point of view murmur activated. Perception plus two for me. Minus plus zero. What do I do? Oh, no. Stop that. No. And that was five. Seven, ten, four, five, and then eighteen. Okay. I'm just rolling rolling very low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it's been established that Annis doesn't roll medium. Like she will land the twenty or she will hit the two. <laughs> She's not allowed to roll ones because Penelope won't accept that. I mean only when it's funny. Yeah. Only when I'm far enough away that you can't cancel. Only when you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, only when I can't help you. Yeah. Okay, so, um, looking around in this room, similar to the one before, each of the cases has two items in it. Mm -hmm. The other one actually had one in one of them for, like, some things big. Yeah. But, yeah, there's, um, a bunch of things in here. So I'm just gonna go top left and around. Okay. So, in the top left, there is... Oh, a stick. A stick. Oh, I, I didn't label it, so I'll just tell you. Here's a picture. <laughs> uh, hey, it's a stick. Oh, that's a funky-looking stick. Yeah, it's um, it's like a a wand, and about you know four fifths of the way up the wand, there's a tiny little um glass area that has a bunch of sand floating around in it. It's spinning around kind of like when you see the glitter water things. Yeah. Um, but it's got a bunch of sand spinning in circles at the moment. Wait, like a snow globe? Uh, well, like a snow globe, it'll eventually settle. Uh, um, this is just constantly spinning. Okay. So. It's, you said it's like one size? Yeah, it's one size. Okay, so it is basically a wand. Yeah. You, it would be fair to assume that this is some kind of wand with a weird bulb on it. So, despite eating all that for breakfast, I'm hungry again. Do <laughs> order some lunch or something. Yay. Don't die. I'm trying. I believe in you. I believe in all of you. Okay, so that's in the top left case. Um, next to it in the top left case is something that I'm not going to bother hiding the identity of because it's really obvious. It's an actual crystal ball <laughs> with little clouds floating around inside of it. Ooh. Neat. Uh, the top right one I think you'll probably find a little familiar. Um, it has two things in it, but they're the same thing. And they look like Oh, this thing. It's a bag. There are two bags. They're identical looking. Side by side. 
Does it look like that? Yep. Funky. It has a face on it. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> like specifically, just looking at it from your role, um, it's similar to the feel that you got out of um, Annis's bag of holding, but these are smaller and more like, you know, satchel bags versus like a big Santa Claus bag. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the very like archetype of bag of holding. Hmm. So um, they're smaller than the one that you have here, so they wouldn't hold as much, mm -hmm. presumably, at least in terms of getting things inside. But yeah, there's two of them, and the interesting thing about it is that um, I don't have a picture of it, but one of them looks exactly like that, and the other one is the exact same, but all the colors are inversed. Hmm. So the blues and the reds are all swapped. Um, I'll Photoshop that later if you end up getting them, but it, it's very clear that they're a pair. Like, they got one thing Ooh. for the purposes of a prize. So that's neat. wonder if there's anything in there. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> then in the bottom case on the left got something really small but it's a fountain pen it's a fountain pen of purple and gold which you heard reference to at least once <laughs> um yeah you were <gasps> oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh it's the pen that got stolen from the desk oh okay <laughs> I wonder why that's not in his favorites. That's yeah. the maximum trolling item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know that it's what your friend with the Roombas is here to get. Oh, that's true. Well, hey, we can be like, it's in this room. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> be like, hey, what up? I found your pen. And then there's an oddly modern thing in the case next to it. It's a completely black credit card. No numbers, no chips, completely black. Oh no. I wonder if you could buy it. Like, I wonder what the credit limit of this card is. It's, it seems weirdly out of place with all these other magic items, but it seems to be a big deal. All right, and then finally in the bottom right case... Uh, there's some jewelry. Ooh. Black pearl bracelet. Oh no, we can summon, uh, we, we summon, I don't know what that means. We can summon Jack Sparrow. I don't think. <laughs> I would not recommend it. I mean, he's a rider without a ship. <laughs> oh no. Well, that's pretty. And the final item in the bottom right case. So you know how the first um, thing that you saw in this room was a wand? Mm-hmm. Hey! An actual stage magician wand. Can someone Harry Houdini? That could be neat. But yeah, so those are the things that you found in here. You're probably not hungry at all, are you? Not really. Mm. Like, I could eat eventually. But that, that biscuit definitely like knocked me out for the count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff in here. Like I don't want to leave in the middle of the game, but I also don't want to pay for our delivery. <laughs> it's understandable. Mm. Oh, it did. And then just like Yeah, I think I'll be fine. You sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. If we do need to pause. We, we have the technology. Yeah. Oh I know. I'd rather you feel better than like us play games. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. So I'm gonna open it. <laughs> you've seen this room before. Ah, I was new to that. Ah, tables. 
Hooray. You can no longer walk through the table. Oh no. <laughs> hmm. I mean, we can't go upstairs yet. Well, <sighs> we could, but I don't think they would like that very much. <laughs> yeah, at this point, you pretty much explored this floor. Um, <sighs> the only things really left to do are... You know the other room that you haven't been in is a bathroom. Because mm-hmm. you can kind of see that outline from just opening the yeah. door. Um, you can... Let's see, you've already looked through the top right room. You've seen all... Yeah, I think you've just seen this whole floor. Unless you want to mess around with the outside area, you're pretty much set. I might run back up and check and check on Jameson to make sure he's not dead. <laughs> Fair. I wonder if that guy's still outside. I mean, could be. You got the impression he wasn't leaving. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go do something really dumb for two seconds. All right. I'll stay here. I'll go. I'll go check on um, Hemlock. Make sure he's not become a, an orb. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe make sure Hemlock has not like eaten seven times his weight in food. Because I don't know if he'd be able to fly. So <laughs> riddle me this: you can order delivery from Mulami, but you can't order any sushi. What is the point of that? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. You can order appetizers. I imagine it's just stuff that they can box yeah. and go, but yeah, it's a bit weak. Wee. Oh no. I wonder if sizzle and stir fry. <laughs> Alright, I want to poke my head out the front door and see if I can see outside. Oh. Through the, the main entrance? Yeah. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of Asian stuff around here. Yeah, there's a lot. Poking your head out the door? Yep. Uh, click on the door to open it. That is, in fact, how doors work. Mm-hmm. And so when you do, you see outside the real world, so unlike what we see on the map, ah. uh, what you see is that. Bigfoot. He's absolutely still standing there looking at his watch. Have you been standing out here this whole time? Yes. Why are you so rude? Why are you so rude? You have my property. No, I mean like, why are you accusing my friend of stealing shit from you when you're the one who left your stuff behind to like a dumbass? You think I would do that? Yes. You think I'm that unprofessional? Yes. And you think I'm rude? Um, yes. You've snubbed me several times since I've gotten here, and you accused my friend of stealing from you when he came back to bring it back to you. He didn't have to do that. Okay, roll persuasion. You're you're trying to win him over to a new idea. Yep. Because this is a thought that has never occurred to him in the entirety of this adventure, that maybe he was in the wrong. Okay, that landed on a corner. You were rolling it on a weird angle, yeah. Uh, 14 plus 7, so 21. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> let him roll a die, too. He's rolling stubborn. Damn, he rolls well on stubborn. You had a 21? Yeah. Yeah, you beat out his proficiency bonus. Because he is proficient in stubborn, <laughs> but he did not break a 21. Um, okay. I suppose it's possible that I might have made such a mistake. But you expect me to believe that he just traveled this far to return a coat? If you don't think he would have done that... You don't understand halflings. 
I clearly don't understand halflings. Obviously! Is that a thing halflings do? Yes! <laughs> Just that wholesome. You expect me to believe that? Yes! Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. That, I was not laughing. Here, here. Yes! That's okay. what we do! Unless, I mean, there are some assholes out there. For sure. But, like... Most of the stories that I hear about halflings involve them tricking people and leaving town. Okay, but who told those stories? Respectable mages. And you don't think there might be some kind of bias there? Okay, that's fair. That yeah. is that is valid. Yeah. But no, he came all the way to town to bring you back your coat because you didn't know where the hell you were going and you got lost. He wanted to bring your coat back because he was concerned. He wanted to bring that invitation back to you because he was concerned. And then he almost gets kidnapped and just mutilated by the harvesters. Because he was trying to do something good for you. And you're just being an asshole. He's going to roll self-reflection. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> he feels bad. Good. I suppose I might have overreacted towards your people. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. All right, so I still have your invitation in hand. Like, are it, you waving it in front of him? Or? Yeah. Okay. I, I had it. Oh, wait. Do you have it? I think I have it. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I oh. still have your invitation in Hands hand. Hands on hips. <laughs> you know... Hypothetically, yours does not activate until midnight, and I know that I know that there is some important shit in here that you probably either want to retrieve, or you know, I, I've seen everything that's here. I know what's here, and you do not. So you can either decide not to be an asshole from now on and actually make it into the mansion, or you're going to sit out here all night and then be very sad in the morning. It's up to you. Okay, roll persuasion for that one. Um, since you've been guilting him a lot, you can roll it with advantage. <laughs> yeah! You want to roll mine too? Yeah. yeah. The satisfaction of 2d20s. Good thing I did that. Uh, 18 total. Okay. Yeah, you beat out his 10 easy. Very well, if... If you will forgive my impertinence and allow me entry, then I will reflect greatly on the prejudices that I've been instilled with, and it will be a good step towards perhaps a better understanding between us. Okay. All right. So what did you see in there? I'm not telling you. That's fair. Why would I tell you? I'll have to see it myself then. Exactly. So you're going to wait out here until the doors are open. And then you can come in. But until that time, you're stuck out here, mister. <laughs> Noted. Okay, she gets back. He looks at his watch again and sees that it's like, 1045. <laughs> Alright, just gonna walk back inside. Alright. Okay. Gonna go find Annis again. Alright, do you still have that invitation? Oh, of course. Okay. Why for? I went outside and I talked to that asshole. And... He seems to regret what he's done. Really? Supposedly. Oh no. What's the address? Oh wait. Don't, <laughs> don't say it out loud, obviously. It, but hold on, let's say it out loud for everyone in the course, world to hear. It's of course not coming up in my recent searches, because why would it? You know, why it's would not. technology? Oh, I'll aim it to you. Oh, wait, hang on. Don't go there. Uh, I can find it. 
Oatmeal brain. I can find it by just looking. No, now they know I live at Oatmeal Brain. Ah. <laughs> there it is. Hooray. Right. Uh, what's this? Two of, okay. But yeah, I, what do you think? Like, if he's truly remorseful enough, should I give him his invitation back? I don't know. There are things in here that I definitely don't think the Mages Association should have. I agree. We don't know what he's here for, and I doubt he'll tell you. Also, he's a giant asshole. He is a giant asshole. Like, I had that whole conversation with him, and he seems like he feels bad about what he's done, but I still think he's an asshole. Yes. Maybe we can, well, if we can find Crosby, maybe we can ask him. Ask him what? Whether, whether we should give back the invitation or not. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and there are, there are a lot of things here that would be interesting to have, but, and this is coming from me, don't want to be too greedy. Yeah. There are things here that could give us an advantage if a grail war happens, but also we don't know if there's going to be one. Yeah, and it's like there's some cool stuff here, but I don't know what half of it is. There are things here we could definitely use for good or for evil. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I was very concerned about half of the <clears throat> stuff in that big room. There are a lot of interesting things. There were some really cool shinies in there, too. Like, I like that bracelet. Mm. Like that fiddle looks really cool. I do. I don't necessarily want the map. I just want to know what it's for. I want to know more about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't. But, but it's, it's important a, to you. It's certainly a conundrum. Oh. I'm also like, I'm curious as to what was in those two bags of holding. Yeah, that's what those were. Yeah, yeah, the, the funky little bags with the faces on them. Those, they had to be bags of holding. Very interesting, for like, sure. Yeah, now that you say that, of course, they're not just weird bags with faces. Why would that? Why wouldn't I mean, there was just a fountain in there. Yes, but we know why. We know, know what, we know the, the reason that was there, yes. That's still really funny. It is very funny. Oh, man. Um... I'm just like I and that fiddle's gotta belong to there's there's somebody else here that um that I assume is also playing music because I don't play a fiddle and there's currently a fiddle case sitting in the green room oh interesting yeah was the fiddle case empty or open or was no it just, you didn't check okay. I just saw a case but yeah, so I don't know who else is here, because, I mean, I didn't see anybody else other than Crosby, and he could play the fiddle. I don't know. I didn't mm -hmm. ask him. Perhaps the fiddle is there for the person who will be arriving later. Mm, that's a good point. Because we didn't see anyone else on this floor at all. Like, Maybe. you specifically negotiated to get in early. That's true. Maybe Lupin plays the fiddle. <laughs> Maybe. Crosby. Maybe Crosby plays the fiddle. Maybe Crosby plays the fiddle. Oh no, um, I have to ask him now. Unlikely. But um, just a note from a character description thing that for us in real life was like six months ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you first saw Crosby, he did have a guitar case. Hmm. <gasps> like a lot was going on in that so session. Good. I don't blame you for not remembering it, but he, he was carrying around a guitar case. Do we remember if there was a guitar in the guitar case? He never opened okay, it. Okay, because it may not be a guitar. It may have been just that it was a convenient thing. I don't know. Like he was sitting there for a while and he was just lugging around a bunch of stuff. All right, well, I say we go chat with Crosby, or at least yell up the stairs at Crosby because can't get upstairs yet. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go chat with him and see what's up. And then I guess I have to check on Jameson at some point. 
Oh, yes. Where, where did we leave him? He Well, I left him over at the stage area so he could do what he needs to do to get set up for the concert. Oh, I, assu- I assume you came and found me where I was yeah. checking on Hemlock. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we could move all the tokens to where you actually are. Is Hemlock an orb? Uh, not yet. Is he still eating, though? Uh, yeah, you remember in Spirited Away when you, like, found the family just consuming all of the food until they turned into pigs? Oh, no. Hemlock's <laughs> partway there, but... Oh, no! He's not physically any bigger than he was before. He seems to just have an infinite capacity for eating. Is he gonna turn into a pig? <laughs> no. I mean, maybe don't feed him in the Feywild. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll drag you guys into the room with Hemlock, at least. Uh. Oh, where's the Hemlock? Uh, Hemlock, buddy, you should probably stop eating all that food. I just appreciate that Hemlock is five feet off the ground. Because <laughs> he's like, on the he's little... like flying down and getting something and then flying back up. To he's flying back up to the top of the cupboard thing behind it, yeah. It's like eating. the equivalent of where I keep the pots and pans over there. That's just where <laughs> Hemlock is eating. Oh my god. There's probably an infinite number of crumbs up there at this point. Oh my god. Because keep in mind, he's doing all this with a mask on. Oh, so that's like. True. You, you made him, like, a little slot so he could eat through it, but he's probably making a huge mess up there. <laughs> yeah, buddy, you should probably stop eating. That's a lot. Like, the ghost people running this don't seem to mind. They just keep producing more food. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> Your bird's eating too much. I mean, I'm letting him have his fill for now, and then later I'll be putting him on some kind of diet. It's fine. Oh, no. Thinking back, you've never actually had a point where Hemlock has left leftovers. He's getting to eat a lot of interesting things that I don't know I'd be able to provide for him, so... That was part of the contract, right? He could eat food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to go up towards where the stage area is. My food should be here in half an hour. Yay! I heard from Panera and gave a very generous tip because... I'm sure they appreciate it. Well, I mean, I, I've lived that life. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll check on Jameson and then, in theory, talk to Crosby. Oh, there's the mouse. <laughs> yep. Ah, where's Jameson's token? Oh no, Jameson is dead! No, his token's just invisible. We left him alone for too long. Did I put him on the wrong floor? No. He's supposed to be on this map. He was on the map last time. Now he's on mine. Oh. Alright, well, I'm putting him on the map again. I don't know why I'm wandering around looking for Jameson. That dance is all the dance for. It's gonna get groovy. To, <clears throat> to sweet 2009, right? 2005. 2005 hits. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to think of what that would be. Mm, let's see. Like Black Eyed Peas. March of 2005. That probably is Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's just dancing to, I don't know, my home. <laughs> I don't know what this song is about. Camels, perhaps? No, this is not about camels, so no. Although, um, I, I do want to note that if you climb up on the stage, you can see behind the stage. Otherwise, you can't. Oh, no. I had fun programming that in. It's completely useless. There's no reason. There's nothing hiding behind the stage. I was just learning how to use it. Let's see. Top hits of 2004. Yeah, featuring Little John and Ludacris. Oh. This Love by Maroon 5. I looked up 2004 because we're early enough in yeah. Toxic by Britney Spears. <laughs> Hey Ya by Outcast, The Reason by Hoobastank, American Idiot by Green Day, oh, Mr. Brightside, um, Breaking the Habit by Linkin Park, Are You Gonna Be My Girl by Jet, Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand. Oh my god. You're reminding oh, me that numb. this was the era when I still ran the music video contest. Numb by Linkin Park, Vertigo by U2, we all had iPods apparently. Um, oh no! Black Betty, apparently. Oh my god. Just Lose It by Eminem. You need to play that for sure. No, I'm kidding. Mm, yes, that is part of the concert now. Um, <laughs> okay, so, I'm, yeah, I'm walking over to the stage. I oh, just my immortal. I just dragged my token. All right. 
Okay, I'll, I'll get out of Spotify now and go back to normal. And Wee! Oh, there's Jameson. Hey! I guess I'll follow you out because I have nothing better to do. Let the record show that you can't see him, but Merlin on the dance floor. He, he's grooving to... Uh, I like to think that he does the swim. Like, <laughs> there's no. Is there music playing or? Not yet, because no, like okay. you are the music, so. Like, hey. presumably when people get here, they'll start playing the generic background music of yeah, parties, yeah. but the live music won't be kicking in for a bit. Yeah. All right, Jameson, how's it going out here? Oh, it's going remarkably well, actually. It's surprising Ooh. how easy it is to get tech set up when you have ghosts that know what they're doing. Do you think we could maybe? Get some of them to help out in the future. Um, it's made my life a lot easier. I don't know how to do that. I feel like Magnificent Mansion is a bard thing that you can get. It's a really high level it's, spell. Yeah, I, It's like a seventh level spell. <laughs> like, uh, look, I guess I can ask Vivi about it next time and be like, hey, how do I do this? Maybe you just need Unseen Servant, which is much yeah. lower level spell. <laughs> We, we need some ghosts. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, Magnificent that. Mansion is actually one of those few spells that... The way that we're doing Tight Moon stuff, like spells of, like, 6th level and up, they exist, but they're a lot less common. 7th level conjuration classes, bard, wizard. Yeah. Okay, then you have Even to sorcerers see. can't make them. So is Arsene a, a bard or a wizard? <laughs> you know, maybe he's both. <gasps> or employs wizard the services bard. of one. Yeah. And then there's Morden Kynan's Magnificent Mansion. Which is the same, is but the trademarked. Same. Gotcha. <laughs> it's fun how, depending on your source, they drop the character names. True. Um, Alright. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I guess if it's going fine here, then... Yes, it's it's going remarkably well. Um, the, There was a... Um, there was one other person. I, I think they're down in the the storage room right now. Oh, yeah. Um, they seemed to be interested in the equipment, but didn't really speak much to me. What did they look like? Uh, an American girl, I think. Do they look like they could play a fiddle? Are we applying <laughs> cliches? Is that okay? I, I guess? Yes. Okay. <laughs> very, very yes. Very yes. Okay. Um. No, wait. I don't want to use that. Let me grab one of oh, these guys. You said she was down in the store, like in the green room, the storage the room? The green room, yes. Okay, that's weird, because we were in there a few minutes ago and she wasn't in there. But she just went in there now. I think she arrived while you were elsewhere. She took one look at the stage, seemed to get a sense of what she needed, and then she moved on. Are we talking about that American folk song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Is that what's going on right now? Wait, what? What? Never mind. Oh, wait, are you talking about the gold fiddle? I thought that's what we were talking about. Oh no, the the no, we we're talking about who the fiddle in the green room belonged to. You remember I told you there was another right. instrument. Why would Americans be fiddle players over any other? I'm confused. <laughs> that's okay. I think I'm confused too. That's what I rolled about. Oh no! <laughs> to see if Anna said I've even ever heard that song, <laughs> let alone roll for pop culture. Like, gold fiddle can only really, yeah. yeah. That's usually what you think of, yeah. yeah. Alright, well, I'm gonna go see who that is, because I'm curious. There's only room for one stringed instrument player in this house. Are well, you not going to play the kazoo? No? <laughs> <laughs> Just perpetual staring, like, I don't play the kazoo in concert unless it's a special occasion, Anna. Or if I'm harassing a harvester. <laughs> it's worth noting that Annis has only seen you play music outside of combat <laughs> situations like once. And I'm pretty sure it was a song of rest. Mm -hmm. And even then it wasn't on an instrument. And I'm pretty sure you were using a kazoo. <laughs> <clears throat> this isn't even really that big of a jump. You realize I don't just play the kazoo, right? Um, yes. I, sure. Oh no. Because you did, you did a viola concert when you were charming um, them on the train, I think. I, I look I forward remember. to seeing your concert. Would you like Hemlock to back you up? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I promise it's not just a kazoo. I look forward to seeing your concert. Oh, God. 
Alright, I'm gonna go to the Blistercher. Penelope, roll inside. Oh no. Three. Three plus whatever, I don't know. You're having trouble telling if Annis is being serious with you. Into the storage room we go. Wee. Internally, just like, oh god, Annis hates me. It's fine. I'm dying. There's Rip. a person in there. Ah! Let me get you a picture. I did not scream upon entering the room. <clears throat> it would have been your right to do so. <laughs> it just enters the room. <laughs> like, yeah, as soon as you open the door, you find um, a woman with a fiddle. At the case, doing some tuning. And you remember how Jameson cliches. asked if we were allowed to use cliches? Yeah. Yeehaw. That is uh, a hat. That is a hat. She's Holy hiding something God. under that hat. There are secrets be, in that hat. She's got to be hiding something it's under that hat. Big old hat. That's yeah. a big hat. She um, kind of looks like an American iceberg. <laughs> Yeah, so she's absolutely um, dressed up, yeehaw as hell. Um, you've got the trademark overalls, as you would expect. Um, a bit of a white blouse going on with that. Uh, really long white hair that's been done up in not a very elaborate braid, but still two braids. She's got pretty big, um, I guess with two of them it's pigtails, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, big old hat, as noted, a big straw hat. Um over her head, um, her, uh, do me a perception check. I was about we'll to say, is it what... perception or arcana to determine if she's phantasmal? Um, it would probably be perception looking for stuff. Okay. Fanta like, the arcana would be more identifying which if you've decided that she's unusual. Let's see, uh, what's my perception? I rolled a ten, and then here you go. I rolled a six plus one. So we got a 12 and a seven. She American as hell. She definitely American as hell. Um, yeah, like just from your perception check on her, look, it looks like she's wearing a bit of makeup because her skin's a little under detailed. Mm -hmm. um, and having, you know, passed for human before, you too have worn too much makeup on occasion. So maybe, but she could also just be wearing too much makeup. Like, as Penelope knows from the stage, you kind of have to wear too much makeup a lot of the time just to not be shiny under the lights. So it's hard to tell. But yeah, she's sitting there, kind of minding her own business, messing with this fiddle, wearing a big old hat. Hello! Howdy, how are you? Oh, Lord, it's Gunter 2.0. <laughs> Lady Gunter. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Uh, are you also here to play? That's right. Oh, hello, I'm Penelope. Hello, Penelope. My name's Johnny. Nice to meet you. And you as well. Do you play the fiddle? I do indeed. Cool. I play the viola. That's like a European fiddle, isn't it? Oh my god. I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, no, it is not a European fiddle. Oh my god. Like a tiny violin? No, it's a much bigger violin. <laughs> oh, I can never really tell. I'm more just a fiddle band. Uh, so is it just you solo, or...? That's right. Okay. Hmm. We could totally have a stringed instrument duel, and I think that would be fun. I have a feeling that's gonna probably occur. Yeah! Uh, have you been given a schedule for play sets yet? Nope. Me neither. I mean, my manager might have one, but I don't think he's been given one either, which from, is kind of weird. From what I understand from our host, we're probably going to each do our own set and then get a chance to play together. Okay. Cool. Okay. I have to ask. Your hat is huge. I thank you. Let me check something. Uh, Is it fair for me to assume that you're of the halfling persuasion? 
I was gonna see if I had those glasses, right? And she uh, just like pushes her hair back and like just, ears out. Ears out, baby. And it says it too. Oh, good. Okay, this is one of those parties. That's just one <laughs> this is one of those parties. Excellent. Well, in that case, takes off her hat. <laughs> Call it. <laughs> I, it was, I thought it was going to be horns or big ears or something. I'm glad we can do this a bit more open. I really hate that hat. Archon <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a good hat. It's all that will nope. suffice. It was a five plus whatever my Arcana is. I have no idea what she is. It's it's one of those things where like you can hide the skin, but... I'm it's either this or Marge Simpson. I, and I've got the hair for it, but I don't think that's more subtle. I like it better than the braids. Hmm. I don't even know what I'm rolling shit. Uh. Uh. Am I rolling Arcana? Is yeah. this Arcana? Yeah, this would be Arcana. 17. I mean, you can only think of a few things that have horns. I need tieflings, I guess. There's tieflings, and there's oni. Hmm. Okay, so... Which are probably just Japanese tieflings if you <laughs> are applying your understanding of how different the same things get different names. Like things with devilish features tend to all actually mm. just be tieflings misunderstood by local cultures because normal people don't know what tieflings are. Hmm. So yeah, this is screaming pretty tiefling to you. And now that you're sort of looking the under detailed skin she's probably got a different color of skin under all that makeup. Alright, just you're, you're a tiefling, right? I don't want to assume, but... Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. Called it. Um, <laughs> yay! Um, well, yeah, I mean... I want to say this is going to be a safe place, but, like, also, I'm not sure. Like, between you and me, I'm going to put the hat back on when we leave, because there's going to be some church people here. That's fair. And they don't like anything that looks like me. Nope. So, we're not very fond of them either. No, it's. Uh, I've been given an assurance of safety, and I trust the host. But I don't think the host is gonna follow me home and make sure I get there okay. So I'm gonna place my bets accordingly. Yeah. See, that's just not fair to you. That's like. <sighs> Can I just say I really hate the way shit is sometimes. Like, this isn't fair to any of us. Give her a persuasion check. Just determining how much she wants to open up to you. 20. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. That is definitely true. Um, like, honestly, I'm here because something that I need to do, my magecraft, has been taken from me. And without it, I'm stuck using hats and makeup instead of the more normal ways that we had ourselves. Out of curiosity, and pardon me for assuming if this is the case, is it a golden fiddle? Yes. Oh, so I was right. Yeah, you know, good go again. It's got it. Yes, I... So, I was done wrong by Charlie Daniels. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, the story of the great and amazing fiddle player of Georgia happened to look like a devil, taken out of context and popularized, has not made my life easier. Yeah, valid. Uh, but, well, the part of me liking competition is true. It's kind of why I want to have a little string off later. Okay, if you'd be down for that. As long as you don't kill me afterwards if I lose. I would never do that. Then we couldn't play again. That's true. But. There's also that no violence rule. There, that, that is also an important <laughs> factor. Yes. No, it's this thing where, like, if somebody's going to say they're better than me, we got to play. We just got to. Yeah, I mean, and, I didn't say they could, but. And the host said he could beat me in a game. So we played. Mm. Then he did. And he took my fiddle. How rude. I'm getting it back. <laughs> well, I hope you can get your fiddle back. It's literally in the other room, or at least some kind of facsimile of it. Yeah, I, I took a look at it, and it looks like it, but it didn't quite feel like it. Yeah. I, I got the impression that maybe the things in the rooms are more for show than 
for real. Yeah. Like, we already know what we have to do to get the one thing we're here for. So, is have you not tried to find out how you can get yours back? Or... So my understanding from talking to him is that a lot of the things here are going to be kind of shuffled up and given out so that we can negotiate that amongst ourselves. Ooh. But to keep things interesting, he picked some things out and made some little games and contests for them. And my fiddle is one of those games. So I'm not worried about someone randomly getting it, but it doesn't mean I'm going to have to play something. Mm. Given his style i'm hoping it's musical yeah that would make sense yeah it, he told me that he doesn't really understand who is coming much less who deserves what so he decided that was the fairest way to do it yeah looking around i think whoever ends up with a fountain pen is going to be pissed oh don't worry we know whose fountain pen that is they'll be fine they'll be fine that'll but be fine. what if you're here to get something else and you get the fountain pen <laughs> I mean, if you get the fountain pen, that's when you just go, hey, I don't want this fountain pen. Can you trade me? That might be the plan. He might think that's funny. That, that would fit his personality. <laughs> that's an ice cream truck in the distance. <laughs> oh, a phantasmal ice cream truck. Ah. The most dangerous of all ice cream trucks. Ah. I wonder if birds get brain freeze. I've never checked. <laughs> Hemlock just chase, chases down. I would them. imagine a bird that eats too much cold stuff would actually be in a really bad place just because they're so small. Like, I imagine their body temperature would just drop. Uh, but, I don't know. Well, but yeah, um, here to play. Hopefully, get my fiddle back and, by extension, my magecraft back. Yeah, yes. The hat's nice and all, but. There are better ways. <laughs> yeah, no offense. You need to do a little more work on the makeup. Look, I've been doing this for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Never I really know. had this problem before. I know. Perhaps you could use what's that spell you have? Prestidigitation? I don't have that. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you disguise yourself. That's right. Yeah, I use disguise self. Uh, do another arcana check, Penelope. Uh, the consensus is no one knows whether or not birds can get brain freeze. Um, huh. Um, not surprised it's been studied. Is that Arcana? Yeah. Ten. Okay. Um, based on the way that she's describing this, even with a ten, you know that she's probably a warlock. Because they're about the only mages who can lose their magecraft, and presumably her patron is upset with her for losing a duel. <laughs> So, the fiddle itself is probably not that special, but it's more symbolic, mm. which would go with your theory that it probably doesn't sound very good. Because <laughs> she clearly has a different fiddle that she actually plays music on. Yeah. But, who knows? Yeah. Could be neat. Out of curiosity, what is the sound quality like on that fiddle? The gold one? Yeah. Uh, for most people... Like a cat turned inside out. Thought so. <laughs> like if if you're me and it's specifically for you, it sounds amazing. Fair. Can't wait to hear it. Or something. <laughs> um <laughs> gonna go check on hemlock. <laughs> like Bye-bye. a responsible like a responsible like, contractor, you have to check in on your bird every five minutes to make sure it isn't choking on its grape or something. <laughs> Alright, well... Hmm. How about this? We try and help you get your thing, and you try and help us get our thing. Does that sound... Which thing is yours? So there's a kimono in one of the kimono cases that belongs to a friend of ours that we're trying to get back. And we pretty much know what we have to do to get it back. But just in case somebody, namely Mr. Lupin, screws around and like messes stuff up, like it wouldn't hurt to have an extra hand in this. All right. Like I'll, 
if mine's tied up in a game, I'm probably going to be doing whatever that is. But should circumstances align, I think we could make a deal. All right, cool, cool. She extends a hand to shake. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, also extending a hand to shake. All right, hands are shaken. Yay. You did it. According to Charlie Daniels, I just made a deal with the devil. <laughs> oh no. Whoops. Oh well. Alright, well cool. Alright, I have to go check check in with another friend, but I will see you in a little while. Alright, and she puts her hat back on as you open the door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeehaw! Alright. Hey Jameson! Yes? I called it! Good job! Did it go as you expected? Yeah. Are you making friends? Yeah. That's good. The hat's hiding secrets. She probably doesn't want you to yell that. (laughs) The secret is how awesome she is. That shouldn't be a secret. She probably wants you to tell people. Okay, yeah. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. (laughs) All right. And now I'm going to just book it back towards the last place we saw Crosby. Uh, Well, funny enough, as you're walking, you can see that in this room... Overlooking the main area. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to show you on the the side screen. This spot right here, where mm-hmm. the cursor is, all the way along and over and up this way, mm-hmm. is a viewing thing similar to before. And Crosby's up there sort of looking down at you guys, getting the music stuff ready. <laughs> Stop, nerd! <laughs> I am an up nerd. I'm way up here. <laughs> Look, you know I have a daughter. There's a certain kind of comedy that I have to deliver on, and you're going to have to deal with it. Um. Did you have fun looking around? I did. I have some questions I need to ask you, but it would probably be rude to do via balcony. Stuff you want to ask before people get here? Yep. Okay, fair enough. Um... Are there any chairs under me? Um, so for where he's standing right now, uh, he is standing like right about here. Uh, if you scoot over just a smidge to this your, way, no, other way. Other way, other way. Okay, that one. Yeah, there's like a few chairs there. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh no! So he hops <laughs> and he feather falls down into a seat. Oh, okay. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Still a wizard. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I guess I'll add his token properly. I'll take him down from the upper floor. Because um, this map is big. You can't tell from the screen, but like if I zoom it way out, you can actually see that there are upper and lower floor regions. Oh. Because we're not doing that six picture crap again. We're just doing one big map that you can move around on. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's add him over here. Oh, wow, you're almost his level now. Oh, shit. He hasn't leveled up because he didn't fight a giant tree. <laughs> what? But. <laughs> All right, so you want to have a chat somewhere a bit more private than this? Yeah. Uh, have you seen anywhere worthwhile? Hmm. Yeah, there's rooms we can go into, but only once. Yeah. Might but want to see that. Invi- for invitation, anyway. Um. <clears throat> I mean, there are one of the many rooms that have things in them. Tr- there is the one. The big room didn't have the overlook either. Which may be security cameras, but. You've definitely noticed cameras in, like, yeah. a lot of rooms. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was one in that room that I could see anyway. <laughs> we could go to the bathroom. Presumably no security cameras there. Important discussions happening in the bathroom. There's the food room. It's true. Let's just go in there. Oh, wait, there's food now? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't ready before. Okay, let's do that. Oh, look, your bird. (laughs) Hemlock, have you eaten your fill yet? Are you still eating? Uh, Your bird has discovered um, that... Whenever Hemlock 
takes a piece of food, it is replaced by the time he turns around. So instead of eating it, he's hoarding it. He's picking up food and setting it up there and then going and getting more. And so he has like a tiny little pile of food. Hemlock, eat your food before you get any more. Okay, so Hemlock looks at you. And now roll persuasion. Oh dear. <laughs> Normally it would be animal handling, but you can actually talk to him, so. 15 plus. Let's see who's my stats. Fifteen. Hemlock sort of turns his head at you. You can't see his eyes through the the mask, but you see sort of lean forward and start eating at the food that's up there rather than jumping back down and getting more. Very good. This will be here all night. You don't need to hold it. <laughs> Continues eating food up there, but no longer jumping down and grabbing more food. So. Annis is gonna pick up some food and eat it also. You gotta pace yourself, buddy. Like a little, like a little sandwich or something. Yeah, a little friend. Don't fill up on bread. That's how they get you. <laughs> okay, so. Fuck the fucking hemlock. What are you talking about? Oh, you so giving, giving, giving the guy his right. versus not giving it to him. Okay, so. I went back outside. And talk to Richard again. Oh, is he still a dick? I mean, I, yeah, obviously. Okay. He did apologize. That's new. What? But I'm not sure if I actually want to give this invitation to him or not. Did you dangle it in front of his face? I oh, have it. No, no, she has it. I don't, so. I have no intention of giving it to him. No matter how much he apologized or had remorse. I mean, that's better. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do you think? Should. Like, I feel like a jerk, but also he was a jerk as well. Well, and I mean, I'm sure he was. Uh, I don't is, even know what he's here for. Is he here for him or is he here for the association? I think he's here for the association. Oof, that's more awkward. Yeah. Um. Obviously, there's not a lot of love lost between you and them, but you might be giving him an excuse <laughs> if he knows you have something. Yes, we didn't tell him we had it before, and then you told him we have it now. Oh no, we didn't tell him that we have it now. We gave him his coat, but didn't tell him about the invitation. But I also didn't show him the invitation. I just implied that we might have something that can get him in the door. Uh, did I fuck this up? I did. Oh. So, ah. so odds are if you don't let him in, he's probably going to strong arm one of the other guests if they're from the association to let him in as the plus one. Uh-huh. Which, you know, would get in the way of him getting stuff, so that's kind of funny. But he's probably going to get in. But if we keep his invitation, he can't get anything. And we can use it to get something. That's true. And also, again, I have no inv uh, no um, intention of giving it to him. A, because he's a jerk, and B, because I think it's funny. <laughs> At least it's kind of funny. <sighs> Chaotic good. <laughs> Chaotic good. <laughs> I'm starting to learn that Penelope may not be as chaotic as I think she is. <sighs> Penelope's been pretty neutral good. <laughs> Annis is really chaotic good. Yeah. Like, uh, Penelope's actually reaching the point of lawful good, honestly. Oh, no! Doesn't make you no. a, a stick in the mud or anything, but, like, you do seem to largely go by the rules. But, like, inherently you're like, yeah, but screw that. I do what I want. <laughs> Which is keeping you out of being lawful. <laughs> mm. Not that alignments matter in 5e. But <laughs> really. it's fun to talk about. Okay, so, hypothetically, if we do withhold the invitation... How much trouble is that going to get us in? Just in general, like in a general sense. Um, like how much is that going to screw us all over? Well, if he's here on business, then 
he's going to have to have an excuse for why he didn't do his job when he gets back. And if you've ever seen the underside of a bus, <laughs> you'll probably be seeing it again. Because <laughs> he's going to blame somebody. Mm. But if you let him in, just like you just give it to him, then he's probably still going to have a stick up his ass. Because in his mind, you just gave him back what was his. Like, you didn't really do him a favor. You just did what was expected. Um, there might be other options, but I usually try to avoid mage politics. Because when they're pissed at you, they start doing stuff. Yeah, maybe we can charm him or... Ooh, that's a good idea. I don't know. Do, do something to scare him off. Put him to sleep. Bennett, are you talking about killing a man? I know. <laughs> like, literally just making him sleep. Until the uh, end of the party. I don't know. I like that. Uh, yeah. We both have charm person. You seem yeah. to be Just look at the durations at on your things. Huh? <laughs> just make sure you look at the durations on your spells, since yeah. this thing's going to run for, like, six hours. Oh, duration one hour. Well, maybe we charm him and then make him get on a bus and... <laughs> Just go go away. I don't know. I mean, I think it's worth a shot. Will he know you did it? I don't know. <laughs> oh no. That's not really my school with Magecraft. <laughs> but if he knows you did it, he's definitely gonna be pissed. I, mean, I can poison him, but I yeah. don't think that's a good don't idea. Do that. No. Okay, side note: Would he know that I charmed the person? Him. Mm -hmm. Look at the spell. I can't. Oh yeah, you can't. Right. Yeah, We're sorry. On it. <laughs> charm person, second level. You attempt to charm two humanoids. You can see. Oh, because it's second level, they must make a wisdom saving throw. Do so with advantage. If you or your companions are fighting them, but we're not fighting them. Oh, when the spell ends, the chair. The if it, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's sort of the downer for glamour spells. Um, I mean, we charm him, we tell him to go get on a bus and or a plane or something, and then by the time he's uncharmed, he's far enough away that he can't do anything, maybe. Mm. In terms of spells that don't let them know that they've been hit, I think you're more in the realm of suggestion. Or modify memory. <laughs> well, that's a bit bigger. Yeah. Like, I think suggestion, if you succeed, then they don't realize. But you have to give them a course of action that they would consider... An option, not just like look at your stuff against their goals. Yeah. You can look at you. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Here, you look at your stuff whenever I find your character sheet. There it is. Do you want to just scroll through your sheet over here? It's fine. We're working on it. You're going to use suggestion. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, I have a thing I can do that's not charm person that, in theory, would make him not either maybe not remember that it was me who did it. Um, feels weird, but I'm gonna do it. Are you going to, what, what are you going to do? Um, so I can do suggestion. Um, so I can give him, like, a command of sorts. Yeah, I have to limit it to, like, something super simple that he can do in an hour. Hmm, get on a plane and go somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen in an hour. You know what the airport? Well, I was gonna be like, you know what the airport's like. Have you ever been on a plane? Yet? <laughs> Roll for travel. I have once. I didn't like it very much. It's unnatural, mm. but yes, I have been on a plane. But yeah, no. So it's, remember, it's two thousand five. So. But I also don't know what Annis's travel life is like. Outside of trains. I've been on a plane a lot. Well, I was I was saying airports were a little more simple, not not as well. You know, this was five, right after we're in rough. Europe. We're in yeah. Europe. Nine eleven didn't matter. Well, Europe is seeing an uptick in a lot of other problems too, but yes, not yeah. as bad as America was. Yeah. Um, specifically for airplanes, Europe is having more trouble with trains. Mm. Um, airports still suck regardless. Well, airports suck regardless. But as far as Annis would be concerned, it's like yeah, flying sucks. I hate it. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I. A plane is a good suggestion. It's a good suggestion. <laughs> look, at, 
A plane would be would get him further away than a bus. So how long does your suggestion last for? An hour. An hour. Hmm. Um. A train, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, that might be a little more doable. A taxi to make him waste his money. <laughs> I feel like making people waste their money. Um. <laughs> Put him on a taxi to the farm. <laughs> oh no, but what if he hurts them? That's true. I Never don't mind, don't do that. Them. They don't deserve that shit. That's true. Well, um, a taxi So your plan is to convince him to leave, but yeah. not realize you did it? I want, okay, I want to convince him to leave. And to, I, I, I wonder if I can also convince him to like... Maybe like... Be kinder to phantasmals in general. I don't. That's very think, complicated. I don't no, think that will work either. Just getting him to leave as quickly as possible and get as far away as possible within an hour seems like the best way to handle this. Yeah. Well, okay. he'd get an hour away and then he'd have to spend an hour getting back, which would put him getting here just after midnight when the party's starting, so. But in theory, by that point, anyone that's coming into the party would already be in the party. Yeah. Oh, we could also wait until closer to midnight and send him away then. Yeah. That way, he may, by the time he makes it back, there's no one that will let him in as the plus one. Okay, so I'll tell him he needs to leave. Uh, I can... Like so is your goal for him to not be mad at you? I guess. <laughs> or, or just to not realize that she did it in the first place. Yeah, I don't, like, I... We don't want to put a target on our back. Yeah. I really don't want a target on my back. Because I know I've basically backed myself into a fucking corner, and that's lovely. Um, I can give you guidance. I don't know, do you have any ideas? Um, well, in my experience... Expecting a lot of friendliness out of mages is secondary to how useful you are to them. So maybe instead of getting rid of him, you should just make him need you. Aww. Like if, from what you were describing before, if you let him in as your plus ones, he would need you to get the thing he needs. <laughs> oh, we don't, well, no, we don't have a plus one, because yours is Jameson and mine is the bird. Yeah. I can, um, I can give you Enhance Ability, which will help with Charisma checks. Ooh, that'd be lovely. Meta, 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 meta. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that plus two is really useful when you're accomplishing tasks. <laughs> I can give you Guidance, which lets you add a d4. Can you inspire yourself? No. No. I, no. So. I wish I could. That would be That's so cool. That's a different kind of bard. <laughs> be like, wow, I'm just so inspired by myself. <laughs> you get different perks. Mm. Yeah, I just, we don't have a plus one to share, so. Do you have any other friends here who could pull him in as a plus one? Mm. Uh, Crap, what was, what was the monk's actual name? Like, Derek. Der Derek. D Derek. Jonas. Um, <laughs> him and his, his, um, Caretaker, uh, your your flying Roomba witch lady. Oh yeah, she could. That's about it, I think. Maybe Johnny. I didn't see anybody here with her. The tiefling. Yeah, right. Shit, I did not say that. Out loud. <laughs> did you not say that out loud? Okay. No, I did not say that. <laughs> You're we so bad stop. with secrets. We should stop talking in our character voices to indicate that we're discuss we're we're meta gaming. Um, so we can either try. Takes and, a sip. We can either be like, and there's Johnny. We can either try and send him away uh, closer to midnight so that by the time he gets back, he's locked out anyway. Or we could. Uh, yeah, I mean. See, the problem is he knows we have his invitation now, so... I mean, he didn't see it in my hand. So, uh, the, the alternative there is that you are you were lying to him about us having it, for some reason? 
Yeah. Halfling diplomacy. <laughs> and like the whole, if we give this to you, you owe us a favor, isn't going to work because it's his, and he thinks it's, and, and he's gonna be like, no, it's my property, just give it back. And we can't just be like, oh, ha, 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 I was joking. There's never been an invitation this whole time. I mean, you could, and then we could spin it as, but we can maybe find a friend that we know is coming to the party and, and get you in as their plus one. Good idea. I like that. But then, like, okay, once, once he's in, he'll probably just find a mages association person and be like, give me your invitation so I can get the thing. I mean, he could, but it'd probably cost him. That's true. They're not really people that do things for other people. Oh, I just had an idea. Theoretically, could I give this extra invitation to Jameson? And suddenly he's been invited to the party, and it's his invite, so he could get a thing. I mean, I thought that's what we were doing. Well, he came in as my plus one, though. Hmm. So we still have a valid invitation with a plus one. Mm-hmm. So I could give the invitation to Jameson. Jameson can do whatever the hell he wants with it. Would we have to leave and then come back in? <laughs> I mean, he's already in the building. He doesn't have to leave. I mean, you've never really explored this question with them before. Yeah. Well, we still don't know if, like, one you person... You could hand it to him and see what happens when they activate. We still don't know if... Because, like, they don't do... None of them mean anything yet. You're only inside because the door opened for Penelope. Yours hasn't even activated yet. Let's go find Jameson. <laughs> well, yeah. Crosby, do you have a plus one? I didn't really negotiate for that. Do you have an invitation? Uh, I'm not here as a guest, so I don't. Hmm. Like, I'm not part of this whole shuffle thing, really. Like, I'm here because I made a deal, and it involved me helping with this. So what are you getting out of it? That T-Rex skull. T -Rex I'm skull? renting a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's go, let's go find I don't even want to keep it. I'd feel terrible if I had that, like, in my shed and then something happened. So I'm just borrowing it long enough for my daughter to learn dinosaur. Let's go find Jameson yeah. and see what happens if we give him an invitation, I guess. Yeah. Um, Anna, do an intelligence check. Okay. Just want to see if you pick up on something. Do, 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 do. What do I have in my... Oh, intelligence. I have a plus zero, of course. I'm not very intelligent. Oh, that's a one. Okay, don't oh, worry about wait. it. Oh, wait! No, it's not a one! Do I re-roll re it? Yeah, you can re-roll. That's a five. Okay. It's a little bit. <laughs> um, Penelope can also roll for this, but it would have been easier for Annis. <laughs> it's a one. Oh, the turn you can't re-roll your one? Jameson and see what happens. Oh, it actually in. happened. No. You both rolled a one to save turn. I'm just, Jameson, do me a favor so and you. hold out your hands. I'm not a half ling anymore. <laughs> You're just funny. half. I'm just half. You're just a ling. I'm just a ling. <laughs> oh, um, sure. I just slap it and do it with open hand. What happens? Oh, um. Did anything happen? Did it light up? Did like, nothing yet, but yours hasn't lit up yet either. Like, um, although, now that a few minutes have gone by, it's almost 11, which is when you think they're gonna light up, because people had about an hour to get here. So. Could... This was a stupid idea. I don't know what I was expecting. I just take it back. Carry on. Sorry to bother you. Oh, um, sure. Whoa. Uh, nothing happened, but also, I don't know what I was expecting to happen, so. I mean, it's not 11 yet. I think, I, I think the idea of trying to cast suggestion on him and make him just go away as fast as possible is probably, is probably a move we can make. And then if it doesn't work, then we can be like, hey, you dipshit, oh, here's your invitation. Or we'll try and get you in as someone's plus one. It's the most we can do. We don't have your invitation. Penelope was just lying because she's a habitual liar. Oh, no, no. We're just messing with you because you're a giant dick. Oh, we never so had diplomatic. your invitation. <laughs> oh, no. You're the diplomatic one. 
I love the idea that you're like, we're not all like that. We're really good people. I told you. We just wanted you to lighten up a little. You have a giant stick up your ass. Oh my god. We ha we don't have very many. We it's almost 11, which is inv when invitations are going to activate. So we don't have a lot of time. We either need to figure out uh, what we're going to do with him or just see how the evening plan plays out. Or, or there's a not a, a rule about violence outside, so maybe we could just kill him. No! Somehow Crosby has ordered popcorn and is now eating it because he's or next to the table. Or at least knock him out, drag him to, to somewhere, and just let him have a little nap until the party's... I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with solutions before he becomes an actual problem. I, I really appreciate this entire thing because it's just funny to me. <laughs> let's try... Let's, let's, let's wait a little bit. And then try casting suggestion on him. Or maybe we should do it now and get him sent away before people start arriving. Because there might be some people that get here very quickly after the invitations light up. Like they may be able to just teleport or something. I mean, it took us a while. But... Well, you didn't know where you were going is the main challenge. Okay, like You can't teleport to a place without knowing where it is. Here's the thought. It's close to 11. Let's wait until 11. See if the invitation... <laughs> Sorry, I'm be hitting the sauce. I, no, I'm only on water. It's fine. <laughs> and it's just, just, hang on, is there alcohol being served? I mean, if you ask for it. Hmm. No, I feel like I need to have a clear head for whatever we're going to do to this dick. Uh, okay, so we wait until 11, see if the invitation okay. works on Jameson. If it does, then I can suggest but the only way he can get in is as a plus one, and then he has to be kind to us through the rest of the night. Well, okay. And not be... I don't know. Why would he accept our offer for being a plus one if he can just find one of his mage association buddies and ask for their plus one? Then he doesn't they, owe us anything. They still might not get him what he wants. I think we're overthinking this. We are... I still think we could beat him up, and then, and then, or do you have a way of putting him to sleep, I supernaturally? Don't. I don't either. I only have suggestion and charm person. Uh, honestly, if you're looking for my suggestion, I would not attack someone from the Mages Association. Yeah, that does. <laughs> it's probably going to end badly for you, short term or long term. Yeah. Um, it. The way that they usually deal with each other is through deals. So if he has to wait for someone else, then they might extract a bigger price that he would have to pay. If you're giving him an option that is relatively low impact, he might just go with it. We could also, we could also ask Johnny if she has a plus one and if she wouldn't mind doing us that favor of letting in him in, but not. But if he's a plus one, he can't get anything. Right. There, there's one extra level that you're both aware of, which is that what she wants isn't in the raffle. So the invitation element of it doesn't really apply. Okay, so we can go and answer the kimono lady's question and get the kimono without having to deal with the raffle. Correct. But for a lot of other things, it's just going to, people are just going to end up with things and then have to trade? Yep. Okay. So, like, some things have challenges. Others are just going to be given out almost like party favors. Like, that arrow is probably a challenge thing because it was shining like that kimono. The map wasn't, though, right? Um, the map wasn't especially shining, but okay. you didn't check it as closely as you checked the other things. You're mm -hmm. just looking at it and more interested. In... We didn't see any other stuff like the kimono lady where it was clearly, like, she. this is how you interact with a thing to get a thing. No, Did you didn't see anything that looked like it had an instruction boss. Most of that was just display stuff. But you also know from what Lupin said that um, downstairs is probably where all that's going to go down. And we can't go up or downstairs because there's I mean, people walking. I mean, unless you want to step over a rope, but yeah. Like, it's clearly, like, not intended, but, like, you know, Crosby didn't die. 
and then he jumped off of a balcony. But, you know, here we are. Um, basically, I don't actually want him to get what he wants. Yes. Pretty but sure I also... Pretty sure he's in some way after that mage's crest, or that will be the thing. Like, I don't want him to get what he wants, but I also don't want a target painted on my back any more than there already is. They definitely don't like me. And, uh, well, I think that's pretty fucking hilarious. I also don't want to end up, you know, dead on the side of the road. Mm. And we already, we're already in, um... Not hot water. The harvesters don't like us very much. Oh, but no, they're I also, don't like them. Fuck they're them. also terrified of us. I, I don't really think that that's a group that's ever going to like you. They're no. kind of racist. Oh, I mean, no, but we don't need we don't need harvesters and Mages Association after us yeah. in particular. Have you pissed off the church yet? Because they'll be here shortly. I mean, they I hate mean, us anyway, don't they? Yeah. yeah. There's that. Man, we are in a delightful place full of people who really love us. <laughs> we once said no violence, so we're guaranteed, while we're here at the party at least, not to be like, violenced at. So. Truth being told, most people end up falling into one group or another just because being freelance is kind of hard. <laughs> That's true. If we leave the party early enough, maybe we won't have targets painted on us. Like, we get the kimono, we get a couple other things, and we just leave. Yeah. So we can, okay, so what we can do about him is um, suggest that he leaves very quickly and, and goes far away, mm-hmm. or get him into someone as, as a plus one in some way, or leave him out there and see what happens. Vanilla, <laughs> yeah. you told him that um, he can get in at midnight. You incorrectly told him midnight, but that's what he believes right now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Just letting you know. That's true. You said midnight when I think you probably meant 11, but you said midnight. So that's the knowledge he has. <laughs> he doesn't know that people can get in 11 yet. And he saw us get in early, so yeah. he has no frame of reference. <laughs> so we could still I'm be- just entertained at how this whole thing played out. <laughs> Right, I did tell I did tell him that he can only get in at midnight instead of eleven, like everybody else. Because like midnight's when the event starts, mm-hmm. but once people's things activate, they can come inside and sort of do what you did. You just got a head start. <laughs> so I unintentionally lied to him, I guess. I mean, that one's working in your favor right now. You bought yourself time. Mm. My food's still not here. That is more weird. I'm guessing you gave him the, the copy-paste of the actual address. Like, for here? Just to yeah. make sure? Well, let me check. Like, I'm pretty sure my neighbors ordered food while they were on vacation accidentally because they had food sitting out their door for, like, three days. I'm not going to read it out loud. Sure. You can look at it. Yep. That is definitely it. I mean, feel free to keep trying to plan. (laughs) Yeah. I think definitely overthinking it. It's one of those challenges where, like, eventually you'll just do something and things will move on. Yeah. Um. I mean, do you want to fast forward to 11 and see what happens? In case that narrows down your options? Alright. I'm going to say, I think we try the bracelet on Jameson. If bracelet works no shit I mean if it works on Jameson then he will officially be the invitee and have a plus one and you'll just be on that path now yeah true we could 
put it on Hemlock. <laughs> Hemlock will just leave with food. I mean, it's really hard to intimidate a bird. True. No, Hemlock has the little... You're both plus one. Hemlock and Jameson are both plus one, so if the strategy would work of upgrading one of them to a guest... That's true. Okay, so we put it on Hemlock. Hemlock gets the plus one. It would also mean that Hemlock is qualified to participate in events. <laughs> just fly off with the thing. <laughs> that one? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, it's slightly different, because normally I think it'd be a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Yeah, this one's weird. If you're using Charisma the... Charisma saving throw. Yeah, so they make a... In this one, they make a charisma saving throw. Um... You notice the duration on this, right? Eight hours. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I looked up suggestion on mine. <gasps> yeah, yours is kind of better. Or do I have suggestion? I looked up a version of suggestion and saw that it was an hour. But... Yeah, because I looked up, because I have the, the Mystic Eyes version and then I have the regular version. Mm -hmm. But I have to concentrate. Th that means I have to concentrate the whole eight hours. They're, they're both for concentration eight hours. I mean, I'm going to be able to do any of the music stuff. Um, you could still play music while you're concentrating on a spell. You're a bard. Mm -hmm. You just can't cast another spell with concentration. And if someone hits you for some reason or you take damage, you might lose okay. concentration. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, let's do this. I just realized... Unless you took... Um, a f there's like a feat that lets you... Like, yeah, there's know. other things that you okay. don't have, but yeah. Um, I'm looking to see if I have anything that might give him disadvantage, but... Anything that would give him disadvantage, he'd be aware you're doing. Like, you can't just, like, hex someone and then oh, not yeah, notice. Fair, fair, fair. Um, but, yeah, like, you're, you're pretty much putting him in a charisma save, which most people are bad at. Mage Association is typically, specifically wizards, which means intelligence casters. Um, could, I maybe, could I maybe distract him somehow to give him disadvantage? So she on can charisma cast save? It? Yeah. Um, Show an ankle at him. <laughs> like could I be maybe like we saw so many cool things in there like blah 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 like to like dis him a bit. Dis yeah, distract yeah. him while she's casting it um you could try you could try that um it would be its own check but if it works then you might give him disadvantage on it cause like charisma saving throws are about your strength of like you you're like your strength of personality like as opposed to will this is just like your inherent confidence yeah so like if you undermine his like if you neg him is what i'm saying if you neg him in some way like making him feel bad about himself or what's going on then yes that would work oh i am gonna give the invitation back to jameson before we go out and talk to him okay, okay. so I don't you're gonna do that to, before you go out i don't want him to somehow roll a perception check and notice that i have it okay so okay. you're gonna wait till 11 to go out all right. Yeah. Well, we're going to wait until a little after 11, because I want to see if the invitation works on Jameson. Sure. That, that's what I mean, though. You're not doing yeah, anything yeah. else before 11, because that's, that's only a few minutes away. All right. Mm -hmm. So, All right. Um, after you stand around for a few minutes, um, Hemlock continues to eat the already pilfered food rather than additional food. So, he's <laughs> listening to you. Good boy. Um, uh, you can tell when it hits 11, because... Um, I go, Jameson, hold your hands out again, and slap it back into his hands. Uh, 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 okay. Congratulations, you're a party guest now. Maybe. We don't know for we sure. Don't know. Jameson's kind of like eyeing Penelope like, what's going on? Just don't worry about it. All, all right. Okay. I trust you. Thanks. Um, oh. So, again, Crosby just eating his popcorn on the side, because why not? Um, <laughs> so, as it hits 11, like, you hear the clock dong from somewhere here. You never saw a clock, but you hear, like, a grandfather clock ding yeah. from somewhere. Um, and so when that happens... Um, Annis's bracelet lights up the way that Penelope's did. Um, technically, you can now you like your eyes do a weird glowy thing that only you can see, but it immediately stops because you're already at the mansion. So presumably this would have let you follow the trail. Uh, Jameson's bracelet goes up too, so it worked. Oh, um, hooray! <laughs> Congratulations, you're a party guest now. Uh, you get a plus one. Maybe. Maybe. I don't see why not. You Technically, also... you also have a plus one now. Cause... No, sorry. No, no, sorry, you. You have an yeah. extra one. Because oh. 
Your nice. guest is now a guest. Yeah, you can get an item. Yeah, or help us get an item. Oh, great. Uh, tell me which one. <laughs> um. Oh, we can have him get the kimono, and then that opens us up for another item. But we have more specifics on what we. Ooh. All we have to do is tell them specifically which item it is and why it is the one that it is. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth, Lubin's going to explain how this works to everyone okay. when they get here. But so, we can go ahead and get it now, can't we? You don't know. Mm. Do we want to try that and then go talk to, the, to Richard, or do we want to go ahead and talk to Richard now? We could send Jameson to do it. No, wait, that makes no sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, let's go, okay, let's go do that now and then go talk. Okay. Yeah, alright. Alright, so you're gonna run over to the kimono? Yes. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna leave Jameson up near the stage because he doesn't know what's going on. But we'll... We're but... taking him over there. Oh, you're he... taking him with you? Okay. Yeah, so he can be the one that claims the kimono. Alright. And then as soon as we have it, we're gonna put it in the bag of holding. Whee! I just imagine I'm like riding on your shoulders. <laughs> it was one more down. Oh. No, what? Oh wait, Merlin's still way the hell over there. Matt, get over here. I'm gonna have to code something to make Merlin follow you automatically because this is dumb. Like, I like the lighting effect, but having to manually remember to move him is... I'm stuck in the doorway again. No! Why are you doing that? Because you're so tall, Ennis. You keep getting stuck okay, in the doorway. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, and it was, um, it was one of these. Oh, uh, well, go up one more, because the kimono lady was in the little thing off to the side. Right. This thing? Yeah. Yep, that's where she is. Okay. Oh, wow, I need to really think about that. Okay, Merlin, don't stand there. That's useless. Stupid Merlin. You're not a security camera. Get up here. Merlin is the security camera now. <laughs> I remember it was the blue one with the spider web. I don't remember why we determined. Uh, uh, something about the, 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 light the fiber blue, content. The light blue kimono with the spider web pattern on the under kimono. And it had a shimmer to it, which we know belong would belong to Kwaku because it's the same as the threads that his spiders produce. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That one. Mm-hmm. Yee. So pretty. All right, so um, you walk up to the display case. With the, get the, the guide lady, yeah. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. All right, well. Oh. Yep. Um... Well, we can show Jameson which one it is and explain to him what he needs to do, wh how he needs to explain it yeah. to get it. Yeah, okay. All right, you do that. You don't have to roleplay it. Cool. He, yeah. He's not dumb, <laughs> so yeah, no, he's... you can explain that to him. We need to give him a raise. Yeah. I've... Lord, at this point, I'm just going to be forking over my entire... All right. Just... You're so what? rich, though. No, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Uh, I'm going to leave Jameson in here if this is the task you're giving him. Yeah. yeah. Go talk to Richard. All right, we goody goody gumdrops. All right, you left the door open. <laughs> I forgot I'm about so that. So hungry. I hate this. Zoom. I guess we go outside. Are you stepping outside? Sure. Okay. Hello again. Hello. Okay. So, we've had a chance to look around at all the stuff that's basically here. What exactly is it are you looking for? Because I can tell you if it's here. Uh, okay. Do a persuasion check because you know he's not supposed to tell you. Uh, uh, is that a charisma? Yeah, it's, it's a charisma so one. You so you have advantage. You'll have advantage. Uh. Going with that first one, so total of 19. Okay. All right. Um, 
I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I, I, he sort of leans in. Like, not the condescending lean you're used to, but more of the, like, this is a secret I'm trying to keep lean. Yeah. He's like, this man stole a crest from a clock tower vault. Oh, a crest. Which, a crest. What would it, what would it look like? The, it's a crest. It's a glowing, um, grid pattern. It, usually they're affixed to a mage, but when they're in this state, they're more like, they're sandwiched between what looks kind of like glass crystal. Mm. That's how we keep them from deteriorating. Don't think we saw anything like that, did we? I don't think so, no. Hmm. Like, I can totally keep looking, but I'm not sure that this is going to be very beneficial for you. So it's just a glowing thing between glass? Hmm. I mean, there was a lot of glass. Everything is behind glass. <laughs> there was a lot of, there were a lot of things like shields and bows and arrows and I'm trying to remember what else we saw. Um, there was a T-Rex head. There was a T-Rex head. That was pretty what? cool. Yeah. A lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of very fine Asian kimono. Um, yeah. No, this is far more important than that. This is a family's legacy. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, do you know who it belonged to? I, that I don't know. Mm. It's not something they tell us. I... Well, hmm. I don't know if they deal in that kind of thing, but we stumbled upon a really shady Chinese restaurant that had a lot of phantasmal body parts. What? Yeah. yeah. They had really, what did I have again? The Kung Pao chicken? The, the you had the General So. They had really good General So's chicken. Wait, you you ate there? I'm not going to pass up good Chinese. But they they deal in body parts of fantastical species. Yeah, I still really hope that was actually chicken. It was chicken. Okay. I went there looking for a bag of holding, and they did have one. So they, this place just sells things like that? They may have. I don't know if they have the crest, but maybe they know someone who does. It's clearly not here. We looked everywhere and didn't see anything even remotely like that. That doesn't seem likely, since... Presumably, if we receive this invitation, it's because he has something of ours that's what the language on it said. Maybe it's not the crest. Is it, did, are you missing anything else? Because it, what it did say something of yours, or like, like did you receive the invitation? Not personally. It went to mm. my superiors. I was mm. the one sent here. We saw mm, there was a very interesting ballpoint pen. We we don't need those. Um, uh, there was a really cool like gold fiddle. There was a gold fiddle. Sound quality's crap though. Are you fucking with me? No, I'm really not fucking with you, but like He's I rolling to see if you're fucking with him. <laughs> I mean not about the golden fiddle, right? <laughs> no, but like he just he's just he rolled an eight. Like he's like, uh okay. He's gonna kind of nudge Penelope, like maybe this is a good time to cast suggestion that he so he can go check out the Chinese restaurant. Alright. Uh Penelope is gonna make eye contact. How far away is it from here? Do I have the an Chinese idea? place? Yeah. Um because I'm like, if you go now, you might be able to get back by midnight, would be the thing. Like, it's, like, you walked to the place from your hotel, and you walked here from your hotel, so, like, you yeah. could probably get there in 20 or 30 minutes. Alright, so she's gonna make eye contact with him. And she's gonna use her mystic eyes as a suggestion. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I... I want you to go and check out this restaurant and see if the crest is there. Because I honestly don't think it's going to be very beneficial for you to be here. Just based on what I know. Okay. So you've made your eye contact with that? Yeah. All right. I'm going to do this one super in the open so <laughs> everyone can see how this works. It's the first time we've got to do a saving for Mystic Guys. Yeah. It's a 17. 17. What is your save? Uh, is it shame? Let me see. No, you should. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Guess this is against your spell save DC. Yeah, I don't see that. Okay, so your spell DC for Penelope is. Well, charisma is your casting stat, so that's three. Plus, your proficiency is two at this level, so that's five plus eight. So your DC is only um, 13. Mm. So you, it doesn't seem to click with him. But he can't tell you did it. Like, it's not like you did anything. It's just it's not jiving. The... No, I think... Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh. Inspiration. Inspiration. No, you can't it's his inspire, roll. So. <laughs> Fucking Well, it's no. his roll, not yours. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, saves are different. But, um, yeah, so he's like, I, I appreciate the suggestion. Um, it's good faith. We'll definitely check into that place later. But whatever it is we need has to be here. Mm-hmm. You've got my invitation, right? What? I, uh, no. No. We only have the, we only have two, one for each of us. See, I thought I could maybe get you in. Do Do you know the person who runs this? I mean, not. I mean, we've met him, yeah, but just not. Just met him tonight. We're not like buds with him. I mean, I am performing. We both have plus ones already. Mm. Uh. I mean, I did follow you here. Did they count the bird as your plus one? Yeah, he was very important to me. Yeah, and my manager's my plus one. That's problematic. Because otherwise, you know, I can't perform. I can't. I mean, I could perform. Like, I can perform anywhere I want to. I could start singing to you guys right now. I think it'd be fun. But, you know, it's just not as nice without a stage and all the fun effects and stuff. And he's in charge of that. So, you know. I mean, if you go now, you might be able to check out the Chinese restaurant and make it back here in time. It is barely 11. You did say that. They're not letting people in until midnight. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you can either chill out here for an hour and, like, because maybe I can convince somebody to come, like, maybe I can pull a string or two, I don't know, but I'm going to need time to do that. And I think it would be worth your time to go check out this restaurant and maybe later come back? I don't know. Like, okay. You can roll your... Um, Persuasion here, using the advantage that you advantage. have for that. Hell yeah! You're Wait, just going to do this the normal way. Advantage is you roll two d20s and take the high one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what the eagle thing does? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, that's a good number that I can't see. 17 plus... Oh, persuasion, right? Yeah. Plus three, plus... Plus two. seven. So, whatever, 17 plus seven is... 24! That seems... You're really committed to this... Diplomacy between yeah, I your just, your race and mine. Yeah, I, it's just you know I think we get a bad rap, and like it just I don't think it's fair. Is it fair? I don't think this is a very fair world in general. No, the last thing we need is to be in bad with the mages association. Right. But that's obvious. Like the, I mean, the church and the harvesters already hate us. What? Yeah. Oh, hate you? Yes. That yeah. That, that makes sense. And it's just, you know... The church are actually the worst, so... I uh, that I can agree with. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's just hard to exist in a world where everybody seems to hate you, you know? And, like... I mean, I'm doing my best to try and just make it a little easier for everybody to be like, hey, I can exist here. But, uh, you know... It is what it is, I guess. All right, well... Seeing as I can't get in anywhere here anyway, um, give me the address of that place and I'll. Yeah, and it's you. Really we'll check in on it. At the very least, it sounds like it's not above board and needs some attention. Regardless. Do I remember the address? Did yeah, I... that okay. was you. Literally went there today. Okay. So like, okay. that was where you had dinner before you came here. <laughs> yeah, definitely check it out because like, I like God. Oh, gross! This is so gross, and I'm so sorry, but like. Have you ever heard of, like, a halfling lucky charm? Mm. Mm. I, I don't... Mm. I'm gonna roll the save, yeah. <laughs> Is that a cereal? I wish. See, that's a common misconception. I mean, that is a cereal, but not this 
specifically. Like That was the one you rolled it to on. So. They This is so gross. Like they will literally kill a halfling and rip out their heart and turn it into a charm. Does it work? Surprisingly, yes. Oh. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Maybe be careful who you tell that to. Yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, I like I feel like if you're going to go check this place out, maybe just be careful. You, you know? think they would deal in stolen merchandise? Um, yes. Oh. The, uh, the bag of holding that they showed me was brand new, uh, had things in it, so yes. Ah. So, uh... Okay, well, I'll, I guess I'll go check that out, and, and I'll um, don't be back worry. at midnight, and hopefully you can get me in. Yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll try. I'll see what I can do. Uh, and I, I doubt that the food they actually sell has any um, phantasmal body parts in it, because they're more valuable than the General Tso's chicken would be. Yeah. So if you want to get dinner, it's uh, excellent. Okay, I guess I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck. Have fun. Maybe not have fun, but, you know. Right. Good luck. Yeah, in general, he seems kind of confused by this interaction, but you have... <laughs> You've convinced him, like, you, you looked around, like, you convinced him the normal way of just, like, you look. He, he honestly does seem to think that you're trying to help him, which goes a long way for making this work, so. All right. He's gonna turn and walk away for right now. All right, let's go back in. <laughs> we run it back inside. <laughs> okay. And once you're back inside, it does occur to you that you were outside the mansion and could have totally been attacked if that went badly. <laughs> well. <laughs> Not that he knows the rules anyway, but yeah. So, I don't have any use for that crest, and neither do you, but nope. I think we should try and get it just to keep it away from them. I agree. Maybe we can find who it was stolen from eventually, or maybe we can find someone that will use it properly, or... Barter, but I, I think we need to try and get it. <laughs> it was the centerpiece of that room. Well, I mean, maybe we'll let the Mages Association have it. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of the thing. But also, high five, we did a good job there. We did. <laughs> Holy shit. You solved the problem. Oh. We solved the problem temporarily. Yeah. Although I'm kind of annoyed that that stupid thing I know how to do didn't work. I mean, yeah. it's a safe. Can't work on everyone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, You'll I'm get it back when you take a nap. Yeah, I'm still learning how to use it properly. It's true. Ugh. The important thing, the difference between that and casting it normally is that he doesn't know you tried. If you tried to cast the spell, you'd be just like, <laughs> Hey, this is a really good idea. <laughs> a wink. And then yeah. he saves and is like, why did you wave your hands at me? Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's the usual limitation. That's why it's more popular with sorcerers than wizards, because, like, they can subtle it. Yeah. But, yeah. When you do it with your eyeballs, you don't have to do any of that crap. Nope. <laughs> All right, well, I guess um, the only thing we can do now is wait. I wonder if it's going to end up in the shuffle. Like, that'll be awkward. I mean, since it's in the case, I assume not, but... Who knows? I'm not the one running this party. It's true. <laughs> For what it's worth, I would never try and do the I thing on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just putting that out there. That means a lot to me. It should. Yeah, uh, Annis has not really had a lot of experience with that. Like, it's not a common thing for people to be able to do. I didn't even know what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't even know what you were doing, to be honest. Okay, then don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Well, we've got... Bards are weird, right? That bards are gonna bard. It's I, We've got a little while. Um, the party starts at midnight, which probably means that Mr. Lupin will explain how things work yeah. around then. There hasn't... You Ooh. don't have any sort of schedule of when you're playing. No, I need to find that out, too. Cause, uh, but at the bare minimum, we should be able to get the kimono for Kwaku almost immediately. Yeah. Um, if you need Jameson, I can also just go wait in the room. Yeah. And then, since they now we have three items in theory, we've got the kimono, possibly the crest, 
Do not leave this room for one more item. Hmm. I don't think... I think that it would make Johnny very sad if you stole yeah, her no, golden fiddle. Yeah, no, I'm not going to steal that. Oh, no, she deserves it back. We also haven't seen what's on the first, uh, on the top or bottom floors, only this oh, floor. Yeah. And then I'm not going to take that fountain pen from Catherine, because she needs it back. I'm most interested in that druid map, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And then I'm just intrigued by the shinies, but, you know. Hmm. Depending on how this... They were very cute. Depending on how this all works, and we end up with the crest, we may be able to give it to someone else oh. that maybe could use it or needs it, so rather than, but uh, if word got around that we did that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oof. Richard would definitely hate us. Yep. So, yep. Yep. We get didn't... it, we get it, and we shove it in the bag of holding, <laughs> and we just figure it out later. Yep. Yep. Yeah, one of the things that you understand about, um, the way mage families work is that obviously you pass down the crest to one of your descendants one specifically <laughs> and um then they spend a, their entire life adding to it and then it gets passed down to another we have no need of it we can all be cast but um yeah. the the reason that mages in our setting care about it is because most mages by the end of their lifetime will have cultivated the spells of like their class choices and all of that but if you inherit a crest from someone who has a different spell set you still get them mm. and you can cast them separate from your own spell slots mm. so like if say Annis were to get a cleric's crest for some reason then she would have a completely separate resource list of things to cast spells with like it's a big power bump for a mage to inherit a crest it gives them a lot more spells than they could even learn, and it also gives them access to higher level spells that mm -hmm. they could possibly never learn. So it's a big deal thing for anyone, but also like it has to accept you because it's like an organ transplant. Yeah. So like if you're too incompatible, it just won't work. Mm -hmm. Which is why the Mage's Association keeps a lot of them like locked up rather than distributed. Mm -hmm. So that's neat. Um, yeah, so as it is um, a little after 11 in world, um, people are going to start showing up. Um, uh -huh. Do you want to play through some of that now? Do you want to call it since hunger and reasonable pausing point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that'd be the best place to, cool. to stop for the day. Yeah, because like I said, it's going to progress at whatever rate. Like, there's not a set start or stop point. Yeah. Once the event begins, it'll be a little easier to block out time because you'll be like, literally time is going forward. Roughly every half hour to hour, you'll know time has passed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, in that case, uh, I don't know when we're playing next, but I will pop this thing on YouTube all the same after I remove parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we'll be set. Hooray. So, hurrah. Enjoy. Whee just record something later and this is the part where <laughs> Annis's player didn't get freaking food. Aww.